Embry to Morris. Senior Morgan Bryan. Senior Kate Kuseka. Good evening and welcome to Shirts, Texas. Michael Rose here along with Trey Grubb. Our QA back at Vibe Lab Studio is the legendary Christina Weber. Thank you, Christina, and thank you, Trey, for being with us tonight. This broadcast brought to you by the Vista Ridge Rangers Booster Club. We thank them for their partnership and their sponsorship here this season. The 0-2 Vista Ridge Rangers travel down here to take on the Buffaloes of Shirts Clemens tonight. Glad you could be with us. Welcome to the broadcast. We are up here at the press box. A special thank you to Miss Barbie uh, and everyone at uh, Church Clements High School for getting us up and running and helping us get our broadcast on the way. Of course, another huge thank you to Miss Una Venkat, our IT guru, especial, wonderful person who helps Trey and myself get all the way up and running. The Owen 2 Rangers are about to come out onto the field. Trey is not only doing a uh, double duty tonight, he has added one more. Uh, tricked up his sleeve. He is our camera operator as well. So Trey, I'm going to ask you to do the fourth thing and that is share a little bit <laughs> <laughs> with us before we get going. Yeah. So glad to be here. It's a, It was a great drive down. Really enjoyed that. Uh, in the wonderful car, the new mm. brand new Kia Soul that we talked about last week it truly has soul I it tell you. does it does and we couldn't really do the flashy light thing because it's not dark enough but on the way home i promise let's go a little bit of music i'll get it going for you you'll fall asleep and i'll just keep going right on all right a little bit of edm i hear is in store yes for us. yes 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 so yeah a big thank you and hello to christina it's so nice to have her helping us out mm -hmm. the lovely my queen is my <laughs> nickname for her love her to death um so really excited about this game you know one of the things we talked about at the end of the game last week was the fact that both games the kids did not it did not have a sense that the kids played as bad maybe as the score looked right Right, that they played a lot better than that, and it really was a few key mistakes here and there. And you know, as as we always talk about, it's the details. The devil's in the details. Sure, That's the sure. same thing for coaching. Same thing for all this stuff. So those little mistakes ended up causing some issues, right? Yes. But I really do think the kids played well, and I think their defense really played well. As as we saw, um, Aiden Cruz got the defensive player of the week, right? Yes, yes. I just wanted to read uh, Leander ISD. Gave Mr. Aiden Cruz uh, this week uh, student athlete of the week is Vista Ridge High School's Aiden Cruz, player of the player of the Vista Ridge Rangers. Uh, Coach Scott had a little quote says Aiden Aiden exemplifies what is meant. What it is? What? Sorry. What, let me try again. Wow. Hang in there. Hang in. Hang in there, buddy. Three, two, one. Okay. Aiden exemplifies what is what it means to be a servant leader, team player, and a ranger. That is from Coach Chad Scott, and of course. Uh, great accolades. Aiden, one of the team captains, was out on the field just a little bit ago for the to coin toss. They're under the helmet in their tunnel. The sign is just being lifted, as you can see, way wow. over there. It says, we are one. That is a nice nice. That is banner. nice, and it's about to just get yeah. tore up. Man, <laughs> I remember that when Dylan played football as a youngster, and Jordan was uh, cheerleading, and we'd make those signs. It was always just a heartbreaker, because yeah. you work so hard, and boom. Gone. So eventually, we started putting a little Velcro in the center. Uh huh. Yeah, go. yeah, yeah. There you go. Smart. Here we go. Here come those Rangers round to the field with the American flag and the VR. Hey, we uh, this is week three. Uh, we are going to get going with our uh, district play next week as we head to Kelly Reeves uh, Athletic Complex there, the Palace on Palmer. But you can see Vista Ridge giving us 
uh, uniform number three. Yeah. In three games. We had the home uniform. We had the away uniform in Georgetown last week. Now we have the other away uniform. This time you can see the black helmets with the VR and the numbers on the side. So we saw the white with the Rangers in script on the side last two weeks. And now we got a new treat going on. So Vista Ridge just coming out onto the field. And the Buffaloes of Clemens are about to come out onto the field as well. And we can see down at the 50-yard line the national, or the uh, American flag and the color guard, I should say, is getting ready to come out as well. But here come the Buffaloes. A good crowd on hand for the home team as we are up in the press box. Again, we thank the folks here at Clemens High School for hosting us and getting us all situated. And we can look across the way and see a nice little crowd on hand for Vista Ridge, the faithful there. So hopefully they'll be able to make some noise, the cheerleaders. And the band are on hand as well. So we appreciate all this pomp and circumstance. Looking forward to a really good game. And, uh, yeah, and I talked to a couple of coaches on the way up. They were in the elevator, and we were all three of us wondering, because there are three levels, didn't really know where to go. Yeah, there's so, a big film deck upstairs. Yeah, and, so. I, and, I, and I said, nope, we're not setting up outside. No. So very, very fortunate that we got this wonderful room here. But I talked to the coaches, asked them actually what they thought of practice, how practice went. Oh. And uh, they said they thought practice went great. They said the kids are really engaged, working hard, and it's just like we've talked about. Um, their attitude is really great, and it all starts with coach. Nice. Looks like we're about to sit up here. Do you have our crowd mic on hand, so we appreciate are you singing the national anthem tonight? Uh, I was asked, but I graciously declined. Oh, okay. Yes. All right, good. Good. I think everybody's grateful for that. No, I, I, I don't think people understand that you're a pretty good opera singer. I uh, can sing tenor. <laughs> tenor 12 miles away. Oh. Ah, dad jokes for days. I just love you. Thank you. Colors making their way out onto the field, as you can see. A nice overcast, cloudy night. Scattered clouds. Beautiful football weather finally here in Central Texas. It's not too hot, not too cold. Nice breeze out on the field, as you can see. And we'll have our national anthem. That was very nice. Very nice indeed. So nobody sang. We just got to hear a nice little rendition. So good job by the Shirts Clemens Band. Yes. Very well done. And as you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, we do our microphone is outside, so it will occasionally pick up uh, some folks in the stands giving a little holler or two. <laughs> so please forgive us if uh, it gets loud at all. We will kindly, we will definitely watch that. It's always great to have that, you know, that ambiance of Friday night football. Absolutely. Just love it. Absolutely. Under the lights we are. And the game about to begin, as I mentioned, the coin toss took place just a little bit ago. We'll mm -hmm. give you the obvious details in just a minute. But, uh, we, we talked about how we didn't want to say much more uh, other than what we observed and what we heard from coaches. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, f from the fact that the Rangers have had a great week of practice, 
Um, a win would be really nice tonight. I'm going to oh. go ahead and say it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, the discussion is, is it a must win? No. The answer to that is no. No, no. Um, and the good news with the players' attitudes and the way that uh, they worked mm -hmm. after a couple of tough losses shows that that's another reason why it's not a must win. Right. He's not, he's not handling a fragile, uh, you know, team that's, that's like, oh, now, here we go. It's none of that. Right. right. So it's not a must win in that sense. But a win really would give them some confidence mm -hmm. heading into district. I think they're already confident, but I do believe that would give them some confidence. It looks like we lost the toss. Clements yes, won it, and they deferred. So that is correct, yeah. Here we go. To the camera, Trey goes. So the <laughs> cut speed, my friend. Thank you. Tanner Brosi the last couple weeks had some really great catches and, in fact, uh, earned a uh, play of the week uh, honors as well. So we're going to have some offense here. Jackson Harrell, the quarterback, but we'll have this opening kickoff. Goes into the end zone and back out. So a touchback for the Rangers. They'll begin things at their own 25-yard line. Just want to tell him thank you for doing that. That helped my camera work out very well. Yeah, any little help we can get from these young men tonight is greatly appreciated. Vista Ridge starting things off from the 25-yard line. They are across the way again in their white uniforms, red numbers, black helmets. Yeah, I was going to say earlier, one of my things about uh, after doing it uh, all these years, I love the uniforms, but as long as I can read the numbers. Exactly. Because if you can't read the numbers... Things are going to go awry. Okay, here we go. Rangers come out with two receivers to each side. Harold in the shotgun. The eye back is Garcia. Fakes the handoff. Coming to the near side. Looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Now takes off running. Gets up across the 25. Gains about a yard on that keeper right there. Uh, not much going, but at least uh, Harold able to get something positive out of the first drive for, or first play, I should say, for the Rangers. I think his poise is key. His leadership is key, and you can see it right there. Don't do a don't make a mistake trying to do too much. Offset, quick throw to the far side, in and out of the hands, tipped in the air, intercepted at the 42-yard line, still on his feet, up to the 30, down the sideline to the 25 to the 15, and steps out of bounds. We'll see where they spot him, all the way down inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. A costly turnover for the Rangers, and that sets up the Clemens Buffaloes with fantastic field position yeah a little unlucky there defense has to, this is one of those quick turnarounds right defense has to get out there you got to always be ready on defense for that type of uh, scenario when something like that can happen and the key here hold them to three points Nathan Alvarez the quarterback number seven in the blue with the white numbers coming out on the field one receiver set up here to the near side. Tight end on the near side as well, up on the line of scrimmage. Two backs in the backfield for Alvarez and company. Runner motion from the near side to the far side. Snap, Alvarez dropping back, quick throw. Nice job by the defense, gets them all off balance. Throw into the end zone, it's caught. Oh my goodness. Touchdown Buffaloes, wow. I don't see a signal yet. Did they? Yep. There it is. Oh, my goodness. That was lickety split. Well, it looked like there was uh, a lot of holding going on. Yes, it <laughs> did. Back there in the back. <laughs> nope. There was, a, there was a penalty. Oh, there was. All right. Yeah, legal man downfield. Since he held the ball a little long there, one of the linemen got up a little too much. Well, that's why I should never write an ink, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Got to take advantage of that mistake. First and 15 now for the Buffaloes. Offset in the slot. Quick throw to the near side. Caught on his knees up towards the 15. It'll be down at the 16, a gain of three. Was that one of those famous skip passes? I, I thought it would be, but no, he, it was just a low throw. Nice. Oh, okay. uh, All right. Had to go to his knees. I don't think he expected that. It's one of my favorite Michael Rose <laughs> isms. <laughs> Love the it's the Donovan McNabb skip pass. Uh, if you want to get technical, you see if they try to pass again, or see if they're going to try to run here. Receiver coming in motion. 
High snap pitch to the far side. Trying to get the edge. Does get around, but good pursuit and good contain by the Vista Ridge defense. Ball back up to the 15-yard line. It'll be third down and 11. Yeah, how many, how many defenders did you see over there on that tackle? I counted nine. That's a whole bunch. Yep, and that's the way it's got to be. Everybody's got to go. Go to the ball. You did a fantastic job of turning that play inside and making the running, running back have to take a bounce. And that, that little bit of time lets everybody get there. Luther Bebley was the carry, ball carrier on that play. Gain of one makes it third and 11. A costly penalty after a costly turnover. Helping the Vista Ridge team out right here. Snap Alvarez going to the near side, into the end zone, has a receiver. Oh, nice job. Pulls it in for the score. What a great, great coverage on the play. But unfortunately, number 31 for the Buffaloes comes down with it. That is Paul Menke. Well, hopefully that'll be my last missed play on the camera. Sorry, folks. Just not used to that. That's all right. 15-yard touchdown pass to Menke. Just about a minute and a half on that drive of 14 yards in the books, but a penalty dropped back to 19. So, yeah, not not they definitely couldn't have played that any better on defense. Just a perfect throw. Extra point up and good, so it's seven nothing with a nine fifty nine five zero to go here in quarter number one. Shirts uh, makes Vista Ridge pay after the turnover. Of course, it was a nice play by Harold. Just ball tipped in the air, got behind the receiver, and uh, the tip drill uh, was fortuitous for Clemens, and they're able to come up with the score. So one more time, we'll have a kickoff here for Clemens. It's Ethan Brumgard, the kicker. Sorry, folks, having a little bit of technical difficulties. Yeah, the scoreboard went away. You, I'll, I'll work with the team. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's gone. Where'd it go? Kickoff went into the end zone for another touchback. So another try for Vista Ridge at their own 25 with 9.49 to go. Play to the far side. No going on that one. Looks like the ball will be placed at the 26. So a gain of one. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top of the screen. Up back there on the... Quick throw to the near side, caught at the 25. Up into this, Tanner Brosey. Brosey gets up across the 30 to the 31, a gain of five on the carry. It'll be third down and five. Make that four, I beg your pardon. So a good positive gain right there for the Rangers. Two receivers top of the screen, one to the bottom. Rangers going quick with the up back. Harold hands it off, ball on the ground. Harold's got to dive on top of it. Able to get it back, but it'll be fourth down. A little miscue right there between Garcia and Harold, and the punting team will have to come out right now for Mr. Ridge. Ty Duchiquette coming out on the field for the punt back deep to receive. Punt on the way, nice wobbler, fair catch signal and made up at the 44 yard line. First down for the Buffaloes. The, that was number three, Jameer Dudley, the punt returner making the fair catch. 
All right, I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Not sure if it messed up anything out there. Christina says we're good. Suna says we're good. 7 nothing with 8-12. Clemens with the football handoff. Nice job. Beverly with the, the carry. He's knocked backwards a loss of about 3 yards back to the 41. Great pressure up the middle by the Vista Ridge defense. Yeah. Needed. Much needed. Absolutely. Much needed. Need, so need something positive to happen here. Second down now and 13 for the Buffaloes. Two receivers near side. Looks like we had a little bit of a jump, but no call. Throw up the middle. Caught up across the middle, up across midfield. Uh, Close that, to a first down. Yep, it but actually the, bounced out of his arms. Flag. And but the ball bounced out of his hands, and uh, we almost picked that off. And it's against Vista Ridge. Five yards, so offsides. That's unfortunate because the wide receiver on the near side went early and should have been offsetting, but that's okay. It's off, instead of offsetting, it's just upsetting. That's okay. Second oh. down for the Buffaloes. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Alvarez takes snap, rolls to his right, throwing up field. Nice defense yep. on the far side. Fantastic job. They've done, every game, the DBs have gotten better. And they play that man-to-man. -man. They play tight. Coach challenges them. That was Brandon Bastow on the breakup right there, number 25 on the far side. Makes it second down. Should be third. No, wait, no, it had repeat second down. Should be third down, y'all. There we go. Thank you, down and distance guy on the chain gang. Yeah, look at the fancy, too. It's a light. A little digital action. Trips a little digital. To look at me. I'm <laughs> old. Light. Trips to the far side. Alvarez takes a snap. Good rush. Coming up the middle from the outside as well. A coverage sack as Alvarez's Ooh. helmet flies off, and he's brought down to the ground. And, oh, come on. Come on. You don't throw a flag. That's in. Oh my gosh! Come on! I'm probably. Gonna no, they're going to talk. They're going to talk it over here. That certainly was not intentional. No. Please. See what the call is. There is no call. No call. It's fourth Thank down. You. Good job, gentlemen. I applaud you, and I'm grateful for you. Thank you. You don't want to see Michael Rose get angry. <laughs> Come on now. I turn green and get big muscles, and my yeah. clothes tear off. It's uh, it's embarrassing. And I don't have a change of clothes for you. <laughs> you so know, I don't think anyone does, actually. All right. To be honest. Way to go Turner's defense. Punter coming out, and yes, kudos to the Vista Ridge defense. Tanner Brosey back deep, low snap, punt gets away. Ooh, good job. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, and a flag comes in, running into the kicker. Oh, my goodness. And play down at the end. Brosey buffed it, and it's a turnover. Back to the Clemens Buffaloes. We were watching the Vista Ridge defender coming in at the punter, getting him on the feet. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty weak uh, call, though. Sure was. He barely touched him, and the punter did a fantastic job of soccering that fall. Another unfortunate turnover after a great defensive output by the Vista Ridge Rangers. There's some of those mistakes we talked about that they've got to overcome. Ball at the nine yard line of Vista Ridge. 7.03 to go here in the first quarter. Buffalo's on top, and they get the ball right back after giving it back to Vista Ridge. So another turnover and another great field position opportunity for the Buffalo's. Direct snap this time. New quarterback out on the field. That's number eight. He takes a direct snap. That looks to be it's Brandon Wright, the halfback slash tight end. H-back, I should say. 
Slash tight end, no gain as the ball put back on the nine. Just moved it from one hash mark to the other. Vista Ridge defense put in another tough spot here. Turnover would be very welcome at this point. Oh, 100%. Snap, Alvarez. A little shovel pass coming near side. Pushed out of bounds. Loses a few yards on that carry. Nice job. Good pursuit and containment by this Vista Ridge defense. They are very, very well disciplined. They don't let anything fool them. They come up field. They maintain. Their, they stay with their block, and they are able to shed it and force the runner out of bounds. A loss of four back to the 13. It's third down and goal now for the Buffaloes. Here we go. Big, big play here. One receiver to each side. One back. Yeah, make that two backs in the backfield. Up back in the near side. Alvarez looking to throw far side. Has a receiver a little handsy right there. And... Ball goes out of the end zone. Looks like it's uncatchable anyways. No call. A little uh, hand checking back there in the corner. Bring up fourth down and goal. Yeah, that's one of those nice type job. of penalties that, I mean, it could be called it almost every play. So, if it's not holding or if it's not keeping giving you know a defender or an offen offense player an advantage then yeah no reason to make no reason to throw the yellow that's the technical term by the way yellow going to be a 30 yard attempt left footed kicker kick is on the way it is good it's number 45 for the buffaloes it's Ethan Brumgard puts it through makes it 10 nothing all right let's see if i can keep everything as it should be. And the kudos again to the Vista Ridge defense. That was yep. a big, big stand once again after uh, doing it twice. Back-to-back -back possessions. Now it's going to be Vista Ridge football. 6.03 to go here in the first quarter. Vista Ridge trails 10-0. The home team, Buffalo, is coming out strong. But uh, as I just mentioned, the Vista Ridge Rangers defense is uh, doing their job and then some. Yeah, that's always that's always tough. Uh, that quick turnaround, super hard to. Okay, so it looks like we we are having a stoppage. Like I'm the, gonna guess there was uh, some lightning somewhere. I, yeah, I was gonna say I don't I don't hear the I don't hear the siren or the oh wait I don't see the uh, light flashing. But yeah, it looks like we're clearing the field for some lightning. So I don't suppose we have any, sp any spots to run. We just have to entertain people. Well, I got a couple. Do you? Yeah, we can take a little quick break. Here we go. We, it's, uh, when we have lightning in the area, we have at least a 30-minute delay, which we are going to have to take and uh, maybe play some music. We're just going to let you enjoy uh, sights and sounds. Please uh, stay tuned. We'll uh, keep you abreast as what's going on and give you any reports that we get from the officials next door to us so we appreciate your patience 10 to nothing 603 to go here in the first quarter we are under a weather delay we will be back in just a little bit michael rose here along with trey grubb and our qa back at wipe live that is christina weber special thanks to our supporters and sponsors of vista ridge ranger football this season that is the booster club so stay tuned folks we'll be back for more football after this weather delay right here on wipe live interested in vipe campus Vibe Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vibe View program, same day graphics, and of course your very own magazine, Vibe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. 
launched in 2017. Our Invite You Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Invite You also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vibe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vibe View ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vitemedia.com to find out more about Vibe View today. <laughs> There it is. Welcome back to, I'm going to say, Lenhoff Stadium here in Shirts, Texas. Uh, we had a flash of lightning, and the thunder just came out of the clear blue. Actually, I can't say clear blue anymore, but you can see the field, how that gray haze is squashed over it. So we are under a weather delay, and every time the lightning flashes, they have to reset it to 30 minutes. So we could be here a while. All right. You made the, the comment during the test. I did. Totally <laughs> messed us up. 3 a.m. Sunday. 3 Here we come. Sunday morning. We're still on the air. So that's, that's not going to work. It sure isn't. It's not going to work. My anniversary is tomorrow. So <laughs> I have a date with my youngest on Sunday to watch the Vikings-Packers game. So Ooh. we we got we to gotta get back for that. So. Where's where's the, that game going to be? It's home in Minneapolis. Ah. So, yes. Got to take my son to U.S. Bank Stadium last year at Christmas time. His first trip to very a, nice. his very first professional Vikings game and a and professional game at, at that. So it was a lot of fun. I got to buy a ticket for my son and my dad and I. So we uh, had three generations of Odegaard's roses wow. right there. So, yeah. I have been to one NFL football game. Or no, I've been to two. Excuse me. Went and saw the Saints with a bunch of friends in the uh, late 90s. Okay. And I went to a Cowboys Eagles game during the strike. Oh, sure. And I got to see the replacement players. The, the scrub? No, what were they called? The I Cavs. don't know. But the they Cavs. were not the real people. No. So that was a bummer. Is that 86 or 87? Oh, my gosh. I don't know. I think it was 87. I can't that, remember what yesterday. That, that was uh, it was Doug Williams' year mm. when they when they finally came back. Doug Williams took the Redskins to the Super Bowl. Wow! Yeah, I believe that was one that was. So uh, Christine says that sounds fun. Three a.m. Sunday. Here yeah, we go. Here we go. She's got nothing better to do. I'm sure. Oh, I'm I'm sure she does. Like several things, probably. <laughs> no, definitely. No doubt. So yeah. Um, I don't know if you can if you can camera can go up up top and check out that big cloud i know people don't know we're not joking around but that is that is a sucker of a cloud right there that's nothing <laughs> you know what they say about texas weather wait five minutes that's it it'll change because look we'll just go over there and it looks oh look how pretty that look is. how pretty that is guess what oh guess what else starts tonight and it goes through tomorrow full moon Oh, yeah. okay. All yeah. right. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. Sherry, my wife, um, you know, she works uh, at uh, Austin High, right? Okay. And works with the kids and stuff like that. And when the, when the full moon is happening, she says that things are a little jazzed up at school. Oh, heck yeah. 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 Get that moon energy going. Well, the she can always tell. And the emotions rise. Oh, so, that's yeah. very well put. Yeah. Very well put. So we just have to maintain. Oh, and it got reset to 30 again. Three minutes in, and we're back to 30 minutes. Because every time the lightning flashes, we got to try again. Is there any way to go put blinders on whoever's I, doing that? I think we could just say, hey. No. No. We, we don't want anybody in danger. Uh, exactly. they, make all the, they make all the fans leave as well. Well, you know, sitting on aluminum... With could a, be trouble. With I don't know. I don't know. We're in the press could be box. trouble. I think you know, we're not on the film deck. So um, I don't know if this is a, a on-air production meeting, but what do, what do people do when you know, ah. we, we can't keep, we kill three minutes, <laughs> then it goes back to 30. So we... Uh, well, we do have two 45-second spots. We do. Thanks, Kevin McAdams, for so, giving us those yep, babies. We, we could uh, play that back-to-back. -back. Okay. 
That's probably that's what uh, minute sixty of them at a time, fifty something mm. yes, people, seconds. Yep. We don't want people to be sick of Vipe Live. No offense no. to Kevin. Nope. But um, nope. So been in this scenario several times, and you just you know come up with some fun things to talk about. I was thinking we so, could we could put on some uh, YouTube videos, but oh goodness. Yeah. No, I. You know me. I like to talk. <laughs> Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, Trey Grubb. All right. So one of the things I noticed over there, you'll see flag at half mast. Not sure what that's for. Queen Elizabeth. But I was going to say it was probably for the queen. I was wondering your, your thoughts on that. Have any thoughts? Have any friends that are... I did my... Oh, there goes another lightning strike. So... Here we go. Um, so I, I was doing my yeah. walk yesterday mm -hmm. and went by a house and they had their flag out. The Union Jack? Yeah. Okay. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah it you know, is. I sent a note to um, I sent a note to my kids and my wife just basically saying, you know, this is something, this is a historical moment. So regardless of how you feel about yes. monarchies and that type of thing, mm -hmm. it is a historical moment. Absolutely. moment yeah. right i mean it, it does not happen and you know for whatever you want to think about it she served her country yes for 70 years 70 as years. queen mm -hmm. and through a lot of yes. stuff right right after world war ii mm -hmm. right and so a lot of change and one of the things they say about her was that she was a steady presence yes through all everything mm -hmm. right and you know it's it's basically a figurehead, right? Right. Um, in a in the true sense of the word, and basically you know mother to the country, and then grandmother to the country. Mm -hmm. um, she was also in a man's world. Yes. Right. So very strong there, um, and her fashion as well. Yes. And uh, she also, uh, you know, she didn't wield a lot of political power. No. Right. None, per mm -hmm. actually. Um, but whenever they were working with, I think it was Northern Ireland, a few years back, she actually went and saw, and she wore a green outfit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so her presence made that, made them be able to work a little bit better together. Right. Right? It makes yeah. sense. So she did what she could. Mm -hmm. Right? Now... She, they live in mansions and right and uh, one of my favorite human beings of all time um, Princess Diana so I you know I have a little bit of trouble with 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 some of it but uh, um, you know it's a different culture yes and she was a pretty magnificent lady who uh, stopped uh, and said hey to everybody mm -hmm. you know um, I heard a really cool story um, someone talked about her that uh, sh that she and her, I guess the guy that you know went with her everywhere. I don't know what you would call that. Uh, not her husband, um, but you know her assistant or somebody, yes. a guy. Mm -hmm. And he said one time they were at a picnic, and she liked to go have picnics. And so they were doing a picnic, and you know I'm sure it wasn't just him and her. I'm sure it's the whole entourage and all that stuff. But anyway, sure. they're out there, right? And um, there were two Americans that were uh, out walking. Um, and they knew they were Americans because they ended up talking to them. But so these two guys coming up and they come up to them and they said, hey, hey, how are you doing? And um, sorry, we have a policeman outside of our door here uh, not telling us to leave, though. So no. I guess we're OK. He's probably inside because he doesn't want to get struck yeah, by lightning. Yeah, so, um, so anyway, so they come up and they don't know who she is. They don't recognize her. And they're like, hey, hey, and they all introduce themselves, or they all say hi and hello, and you know, talk to each other. And she's, you know, she's like, where are you from? And uh, they say somewhere in the United States, I forget where it was. And uh, they're like, so where are you from? She goes, oh, I'm from London, you know, from mm -hmm. London. Really? Yeah, we have a place out here. I come out here all the time. I forget where it is, but it's like a famous, famous place where the family, you know, the the uh, the Marnicky family would go, right? Sure. Yeah. So she's out there, and she's like, oh, yeah, I come up here all the time, all the summer. She's like, 
Really? Well, if you're out here and you're coming all the time, you've probably seen the queen. Have either one of you met the queen before? And she says to them, no, but he has the guy that's with her all the time. Sure. And so they're like, oh, wow, really? And he's like, yes, I, I have. And they're like, what's she like? And she's like, he's, well, she's uh, got a really neat sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, my gosh, this is so neat. And so they get their phone. They hand it to her. Yep, they hand it to oh her. And they say, can we get a quick picture with him? So she takes a picture of the three of them. And then they do a selfie with and she's in it right and they're oh like yeah and they take their picture with the guy who's who knows the, the queen knows the queen and uh, so and then they lady. and so then they leave and uh, they're laughing and she says you know what i would love to be a fly on the wall <laughs> when that gentleman shows his family that picture mm -hmm. and they're like that's the queen of england <laughs> so she had, she was, and they said a lot about her, that she was, she was funny, um, oh, in private, yes, yes. she was funny, um, you know, you talked to, Obama said that she was that way, mm -hmm. you know, very personable, yes. um, my gosh, I how many millions of people she's met with the, oh, hey, how you doing, mm -hmm. doing that little trail, you know, where you walk along and you shake the hands and stuff like that, oh, sure, oh, gosh, I just yeah. can't imagine how many people she saw, but lived a long life, um, grandkids great grandkids uh and like i said you know not everybody's perfect and she grew up at a different time she sort of evolved with the times i think the royal family actually started paying taxes a few years back um because they hadn't paid taxes because of their royal family sure but um so that changed and evolved i think uh diana also kind of kind of changed them a little bit in how they did stuff um I mean, what, three of her sons actually got divorced, which is just unheard of in a royal family. So, anyway, we now have King Charles, mm -hmm. and uh, he spoke today very kindly about his mama, he mm -hmm. said, and his papa. Yes. So, very sweet. Um, sad day for Britain. Yes. And, uh, you know, what she saw, she oversaw them going from a country themselves to the European Union. Yeah. in multiple countries mm -hmm. and i think it said that she had been to every country or something something along those lines so really neat lady and uh um britain's gonna have a they, it's it's really interesting how much pomp pompous or not pompous how much um structure is around this yes right and they were talking about that this has been written out and detail for quite a while mm -hmm. right and there's all these things that they have to do yes you know this person now you know i think charles uh he makes william and kate now the prince and princess of wales because he was the prince and princess yeah you know, he wasn't princess but he was the prince of wales right so all that jockling jockeying around now mm -hmm. has to happen so mm -hmm. quite interesting when you think about it yes Ten minutes worth of interesting, by the way. Very well done. Thank very you. well done. You just uh, I'm, family is very important to me. Family and relationships. And you spoke to that. I mean, that's to to juggle a family and to keep it, you know, it, which is constantly in the public eye, which is constantly under scrutiny, which is constantly not always fulfilling their obligation as royalty. Yep. Um, shows how fallible we are. How how it isn't easy to to keep things in line and just thinking of my family i'm not really the black sheep but I, i'm i'm a divorced dad i am um, i'm the, uh, <laughs> I'm the well and I, i'm you know my i'm the oldest and the only biological child my mom mom and dad mm -hmm. adopted my sister and then they welcomed my my mother's three uh, my mother's brother's three children into my family when they were quite young and so i have pseudo siblings that are my first cousins and and uh, I'm, you know, I'm divorced, and I'm living a thousand some miles away. I'm, you know, and I just think about how, you know, those people are right there. Uh, Harry and uh, mm -hmm. Meghan uh, came into the mix and tried to emulate Princess Diana and to be world, worldly mm -hmm. and serve in a new place. And they renounced their 
yeah. status they renounce themselves and it's a lot her, of money for her to up. keep for her to keep civil about that um you know there's lots of things you could say about these folks and uh well charles mentioned them today good he said you know wishes love um because that that was a big deal yes. that was a really big deal um for them to leave and um it's i mean harry is so much like his mom mm -hmm. it's pretty incredible yeah so um kudos to him for doing what his family needed him to do and what what she needed him to do mm -hmm. you know um one thing they talked you you mentioned that uh, the eye and the scrutiny on them you know i don't know when it was but probably 30 years ago or so it was quite a while quite a while back when she discussed that openly that um the monarchy should not be free of criticism yeah because for a long time it was you know the royalty you you bow and that's it mm -hmm. and uh she she changed that she talked about that openly and you know and so that opened that up which was really great because everybody is open to that kind of criticism if you're going to lead people mm -hmm. you should be open to that criticism exactly so you know a, a great story a historical moment you know uh, like i said my kids <laughs> You know, uh, imperialism sucks, monarchies suck, <laughs> right? That type of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But from a historical nature, just a really, really neat thing to pay attention to and watch, especially to see another culture mm -hmm. and see how they do stuff. And, you know, it's kind of a weird way of saying it, but much like what we enjoy here in terms of a transition of power, same thing happens there, yeah. right? Although it's not a political power. But it transitions, yes. right? And yeah. it's and it's smooth and it's flawless. Nobody complains. Nobody. I don't want to be the Prince of Wales, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody. Everybody does what they're supposed to right. do, yep. right? So, very cool in that regard. We've gone a solid. What is that? It's thirteen. Thirteen minutes, minutes without yeah. another strike, and it is raining. It is a raining out strong there. out there now. The track is getting some puddles behind the bench here on the near side, and it is coming down really good. The clouds are separated a little bit, but they are still just central over the field right now. So, and I was working a game where um, it wasn't to where we could see it, but a tornado hit. Oh, wow. Within, I don't know, like a 10, 15 mile radius of where we were. Hmm. And I think our delay, I'm not going to say it because that'll jinx it. But it was quite a while. <laughs> and we talked about quite a few things. Yeah. You know, one thing I'd like to talk about, my son turns 21 today. That's right. Happy birthday, Dylan. Yeah. I know I've never met you, but I feel like I know you. <laughs> he is a, an extraordinary person. Love him just so much and uh, very, very proud of him. He is currently right now at Blinn. Um, and he's got two more semesters there, and then he will transfer into uh, A and M, okay. or UT, or Texas State, or he might actually go to Texas A and M um, Corpus Christi. He'd be down near the beach. He loves the beach. There you go. So, and he changed his major to psychology. Okay. Yeah, his mom has a master's in psychology, and his sister is going to get. God, next year or sometime after that she's going to go back and get a second master's wow. in psychology wow good for her cool. yeah and there's something in common that they have there me they got to figure out how to work with crazy people yeah well <laughs> we all have our inspiration we all have our dedic our, our direction we all have our motivation whatever the case may be so yeah I'm a, my son uh, my youngest is 18 he told me sometime over the summer i i love you and i get i get um the, all of your good things half of your good things and i get mom half of mom's <laughs> good things and i i see the bad things and i learn from them and i have an older brother who taught me how to s stay in line and ah. just uh make sure everybody you know keep the peace which i said make sure you're not a people pleaser but you stay you know stand in your power that kind of thing so good for your kids to follow their hearts and you know yeah I, you know i have a feeling you know with dylan i went to junior college and i transferred 
and then we're finished. But that's okay. Yep. I'm not saying he's not going to finish, but I'm just saying he's welcome to change his major. As oh many, yeah, as that's, many times as he wants. Yeah, and so we're we've always given both of them uh, the freedom to be what they're going to be, and mm -hmm. that there's no um, definition for how a person is supposed to be, except for no hate, you know, no mm -hmm. no judgment treat other people with kindness yes. and serve others so which they do fantastic so very very proud of them both and uh he is uh going to celebrate he said today by going and getting a, ordering a beer at a restaurant and having to show a license to say yes, yes. i can have this beer it's all mine good for him yep I asked him if, if it nice was his milestone. first i'm just kidding no <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, something that we can talk about, um, football. You know, uh, the season started here. We start district play next week. Yep. Um, tough district. Um, McNeil, I think, is 2-0 and going into this weekend. That's where yes. I, I know that just because that's where Dylan and Jordan both went to high school, so I keep in touch with them. And uh, so I know that. McNeil is two and zero, which that's the first time they've done that in oh gosh, in forever. So it'll you know district play will be tough. Um, big schools, you no, know, uh, say, so you know lot, a lot to look forward to there. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how district goes. It's always tough because the goal is never. The goal is never, oh, we're going to win all our games, right? Um, it's always district, uh, district play. And it's like Sarke uh, Sarkeesian said about the Longhorns playing Bama tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody's like, oh, my gosh, it's Bama, it's the Longhorns. You know, what, it, what will it mean if you lose the game? And he said, well, I mean, we have some work to do, but our goal is to be at the Big 12 Championship, Yeah. right? And that's that's the goal here mm -hmm. for both these teams right. is to be in their district, you know, to win their districts or finish in a place in the district where they can make the playoffs mm -hmm. and make a good run in the playoffs. Yes. Right. That's what that's what everybody's goal is. So these games are always about putting things on film uh, where the coaches can help the players get better. Exactly. Because that, that, you know, in this coaching staff very much looks that way to me oh my goodness it's restarted yeah it has we're back to 30 minutes y'all back to 30 on the clock so wow well, we, we both sounded really sad when we, we said did. that didn't we? we we want some football like everybody else says that's why we're here but uh, the universe has some other ideas and that's all right life happens for us doesn't happen to us that's we make, right we make some lemonade and uh we we could go dance in the rain. Maybe you, you got your rain slicker on. Maybe I do. You could thank you to your wife who recommended that a week she, ago. She did. So kudos to her. I'm going to get in your Kia Soul and be a drowned rat. If oh, my. Up. Boy. I'll have to figure that out. Nope. We're, uh, my Kia Soul is brand new. We're not. It's not getting dirty. <laughs> well. You're going to have to ride on the roof. To, I'm a like the grandma, <laughs> Like the grandma did in uh, vacation. vacation. That's right. Beautiful. <laughs> it's really coming down, Michael. It is. Wow. Yeah. Deluge. As we see a silver soul in the distance. <laughs> silver surfer? What? It's going to come by those porta potties any second, I think, unless it just stopped. But ah. I saw a silver soul back behind. Maybe everybody went out to their cars. They're just kind of waiting it out. Yep. Hello. Just the stands are clear. Hi. Yeah. Somebody opened the door. Saw us. I'm like, ooh, no. Ooh, no. Don't want any part of them. No, thanks. No, thank you. Nope, nope, nope. Not the right Vista Ridge crew. So, you know, something that we can talk about. I'm not sure who's listening, but something that Appreciate we can. Appreciate if you are. Yes, definitely. And if you are, you're welcome to tweet us. Yes. And say hello. And we will give you a shout out if you know one of the players. Um, yeah. Welcome to give you a shout out and say hello. Michael Roca follow, started following me, and his dad did as well this week. So appreciate having some connection to Vista Ridge football via those gentlemen. I believe Tanner Brosi started following me too. So uh, and that's mutual. So at at Michael underscore Rose A T X V O X Vox as in voice. And so that's my 
Twitter handle if you want to look it up. And if you want to go to Vista Ridge, you can see that I, yep. I included the link for tonight's broadcast, which maybe you already, that's how you figured it out. So you can tweet at us and say hello if you'd like. Um, and we can give you a shout out. Yeah. And the, the clock restarted again. So we're at 27 minutes now. That's so. super awesome. Mm -hmm. So my Twitter handle, at Coach Trey Grubb. So Coach T-R-E-Y G-R-U-double-B. B-B. That's right. You can tweet us, and we'll give you a shout-out, say hey. But uh, something, you know, you know, it's close to my heart. Um, very, when I, when I got asked to do Vista football, number one, super pumped that it was you. So Likewise. for us Thank to be able you. to work together, that was just super great. Um, love me some Michael Rose. Uh, but... This is close to my heart because of um, a gentleman named Miles Hutchinson. Hmm. You and I have talked about yes. him. And uh, if anybody listening has been at Vista for a while, uh, they'll know that name. Um, he, was, he was there and uh, passed away in 2018. And to make a you know, very sad uh, long story short, um, he and Dylan were best friends and uh, very, very close uh, much like a brother to him, and Miles was much like a son to me, and uh, that came from playing basketball together. Mm. Um, and uh, just a wonderful human, just a fantastic person Miles was, and he he would come to our basketball games when he was nine or ten. He would come to our games and he would watch Dylan play, and he just loved Dylan. And Dylan was very very sweet and loving to him. And it was just a match made in heaven. And a few years later, um, had the opportunity, told him to come to try out for the team that Dylan was going to be playing for. This is select basketball in Central Texas. Dylan was one of the better players in Central Texas. Mm. And uh, had him come try out and had him play on the team. And from there, it was three or four years of coaching him or playing basketball with him. And uh, he and Dylan... Uh, developed a very strong relationship and he developed uh, my whole family uh, developed a very strong relationship with miles my loved miles and he passed away in a pretty awful hor uh, car accident in december 2018 um, but miles's impact on everyone uh, uh, he had a huge impact on lots of folks and uh, it it showed itself in the funeral where there were you know, i don't know several thousand people there for, you know, a young teenager, or not young teenager, but, you know, an 18-year-old, so to speak. So, you know, he had, a, he had an impact on a lot of people. And one of the things that I took from him was that uh, he got it really ill when he was younger, and his life was saved by someone donating their blood mm. and saved his life. And he would go around and tell this story. Um, and I remember him telling me the first time, and he said, Coach, I asked, I asked if I could meet the person because I wanted to say thank you. And I couldn't, right, because of the, you know, rules associated yeah. with that. And so he said, so from that moment on, I made a commitment to myself that every person I met, I would treat as if they had just given me blood and saved my life. So basically treat everybody, love, respect. Yeah. Um, just he's just an incredible he was an incredible human being so that you know that message uh, Dylan and I Sherry Jordan and many people carry all of that forward mm -hmm. for miles mm -hmm. and pass that forward for him um, and just an extraordinary human and so doing this and being able to be close to, to the high school that he loved so so much is just a, a unbelievable opportunity and just so thankful for and grateful for the opportunity to do it because uh, miles meant a lot to me and my family yeah definitely so. thanks for sharing that that's uh, when you shared that with me i was i was it was over the phone but i literally was on the edge of my seat i was wondering what was mm. gonna what was gonna come next that's just very powerful that um i've served and worked with children my whole life children young adults however you want to label it but i want to i want to tell everybody whether you have a child or not whether you're an adult or a child there is 
There is no possible way that any of us, regardless of our age, should look down upon or treat anyone younger, any child, as if they don't know anything. There are no better or smarter people <laughs> on our planet than our children. They know way more. They see. Yep. They hear everything. As much as we want to keep things from our kids, as much as we want to protect them, as much as we want to keep things on the down low, as they say, as we want to keep our feelings, like we don't want to make our kids nervous or want to make them, want, want them to know that mom and dad aren't, aren't having a good time or that whatever, they already know it. All right. They don't have to hear it. They feel it. They see it. They understand. So the more often we can have a conversation not as not an adult quote unquote conversation, but just a normal conversation to talk with our kids and just to be real and be honest and be open and not and uh, you know we can protect with our language, we can protect with our our heart and everything else, but we want to make sure that we don't think for a second that they don't know what's going on. Yeah, we and don't need to protect them from that, right? Exactly. Um, so Jordan is a teacher down in Hayes, mm -hmm. right? And uh, this is her second year to be doing it. Her first year as a you know true teacher, because last year was during the fellowship. She was still taught, just did all that stuff. Sure. Um, and uh, they liked so much how she did stuff that they actually made her the fifth grade uh, team lead. Oh, wow. And one of the things that she um, preaches and does in behavior is treat the kids with respect mm -hmm. and has... Not, like you said, it's not an adult conversation, but it's a real life yeah. conversation. Yeah. And so she has conversations that a lot of, you know, a lot of people might say, oh my gosh, I, I, how can, you know, kids can't really understand that. Well, in truth, a lot of times they can. And if they don't, when you're having that conversation, you'll be able to tell, mm -hmm. right? And you'll yeah. be able to change it up, right? right. And be yep. able to adapt or do whatever you need to do. But she said that, you know, her experience is that they understand a lot more than you think, especially if you put it in terms that help them understand. You may not, you know, you may not use language like we're using right now, this deep conversation we're having or whatever, like a psychologist might have. But if you change the language and make it to where that, uh, in a way that they might understand what you're talking about, you know, mm -hmm. hey, when you say that, that hurts my feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Right? That hurts their feelings when you say that. Mm -hmm. What if someone, you know, said this, how would you feel? Right? right, and just make it very plain and simple because those type of things are pretty simple. Yeah, you know, right. yeah. life stuff. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. so you know, talking to that, Jordan's a big believer in that, and it's yeah. one of the things that's made her a fantastic teacher. And you know, she's showing everybody down there that it works. Yep, good for her. Kids don't run from that. Mm -hmm. Right, they don't. They don't look at her like, "What are you talking about?" Right. Yeah, she has right. real conversations with them, and they grow. She's. You know, something that I've talked about a lot on all my broadcasts is what's called a growth mindset, mm -hmm. right? Always willing to grow. Yes. What you know is not this 100% truth, that you're open to learning stuff and growing as a person and growing in your language and growing in your knowledge. And she takes that and puts it into her school and how she teaches the kids. So pretty cool. Hey, they're Thank looking me. at us and they're like, wow, they're, they're still talking. They are. Hey, uh, I just want to ask if you stole that from my coaching handbook um, that I created or at all, the growth mindset piece, because that's oh. part, of, it's part of my four-step okay. process for when I do life coaching with people. So. I'll say yes. Okay, thanks. Sure. So I was like, whoa. <laughs> nice. No, a big fan of growth mindset. It's a big coaching thing, mm -hmm. which is probably where, you know, well, yeah. where you see it from, so... We've made it to 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. Again. Again. Yep. And uh, so we're right at about 35 minutes of a delay so far. Ah. So we've had, uh, we got it down to three. We got it down to four minutes. Then we got down to uh, 14 minutes. And then, then we now we're down to 18 minutes. So it's right about 35 or so. Okay. Because they keep resetting the clock. So I've just been doing. Yeah, some not a fan of that. Quick Minnesota but, math in my head, and that's but, <laughs> but we definitely want everybody to be safe. Absolutely. Uh, I can tell you, it's going to be pretty fun watching them run out there on that turf now. Oh, that is now standing water on that. Yep. Baby. So. 
Wonder, wondering when we're going to get the... <laughs> oh. <laughs> if we get the... The old uh, cancel? The old, the Since old it's comment. not a dist... Well... I did probably maybe replay it. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, we don't want to ruin the field. We don't want to get anyone injured. We don't want any of that stuff. But we're here under the lights, and there's not much going on except Trey and I. Just letting you know. Yeah, some heavy, heavy. We're, we're telling you some life right now. We're, we're That's giving right. you some free coaching, free parenting, free, uh, <laughs> free stick, as it were. So appreciate you sticking with us. Yeah. Again, we're under a weather delay. We're <laughs> we ta we're not talking for our health. <laughs> we're just passing the time, having a good time, and then, um, yeah, I, I have to say, it's been a been a couple years of. Uh, I don't remember any delays last year for my broadcast, at least. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I'm much prefer to be hanging out with you than any of our other fine folks at Vipe Live. Just saying, no well, offense, no. Uh, no harm, no foul. Just yeah, I, I think this is the perfect scenario right yes. now with you and Christina and, and Suna mm -hmm. helping. I, I'm pretty much living in the zone at yeah. the moment. Happy about that. Absolutely. I haven't been back. I haven't been in the booth for a few years now. So uh, it's when like I had you never the left. Well, mm -hmm. when I had the opportunity to do it with you and to honor Miles um, yeah. every day, or uh, uh, it was just something that I really. This was wonderful mm -hmm. to come up. So. Very excited about it. We have a, uh, I'm not going to, I don't think I can get the camera on it, but we have a moth that's joined oh, us. I saw that, yeah. That's, yeah, it's been there for a solid 15 minutes now. That's a, that's a, you know, moths are butterflies. It's just a, it's a good little omen. And I don't believe that. Spiritual day. They definitely are. They go through the, they they're called moths. The cocoon process. Yeah, but they're moths. Well, still. That's a lower class butterfly, they, right? But still, <laughs> is what it is. We, you don't want them in your. You don't want them in your house because you don't want holes in your clothes. Ah, but, you know, okay, all right. You know. Oh, that's so has anybody good, tweeted that's us? That's a good segue. I haven't seen anybody yet. A good segue because we, we, you know, eating eating clothes as cedar uh, is a good moth preventative. So your cl closet should be lined with cedar. Okay. To prevent moths, but we're taking on Cedar Ridge next week at the Palace on Palmer. Oh. To, to open okay. district play, and a fun fact. Um, Please. I, I have uh, had the pleasure of being the voice of the Cedar Park Lady Timberwolves yes. basketball team, the two-time defending Do it. champion. Do it, Michael. Champions. Yes. In 5A. Back-to-back. Uh, -back. Congratulations, Lady Timberwolves. But I've had the pleasure of being the voice of the Lady Timberwolves for six seasons. The very first broadcast I had as the voice of the Lady Timberwolves, in one sentence, I said Cedar Park, Cedar Ridge, and Cedar Creek. Oof. <laughs> I was, a, and I'm like, oh okay. crap! I'm not, I'm not coming back for game two. I can't believe I just did that. I had to. I was, you know me. When I get laughing, I, Ooh. I was laughing at myself. I was embarrassed. I have, I have and many a time uh, carried the show. <laughs> I After, lose it. Yes, right. Yes, and the, the older I get, um, just like my father, my dad cannot say a joke without laughing before he gets mm. three words into the opening sentence. And uh, well, when it's so, funny, it's funny, but yeah, to me, everything is. But yeah, I said Cedar Park, Cedar Creek, and Cedar Ridge. Well, you and, got it out of the in, way, in the, in the same you got sentence. it out of the way. I couldn't believe it. And yeah, I'm six years later, two state championships. Um, I'm still going strong, so I appreciate those fine folks yeah. for, for keeping me on board, even though I couldn't quite figure out where the heck I was that first game. So, yeah, that's a pretty neat uh pretty neat story um it's hard to do in high school yes to win to, to not only i mean that's one of the things that's made westlake pretty extraordinary last several years in football mm -hmm. I, I mean going to the championship just getting to the championship game every year yeah right and then winning it also mm -hmm. a few times so that's pretty neat that uh, cedar park was able to do that Six. i mean cedar creek i mean i mean cedar ridge cedar ridge park or yeah, creek yeah i mean cedar cedar valley <laughs> I only know the three. I'm Cedar Trees? <laughs> the uh, Lady Timberwolves undefeated. They've won 68 straight games dating back to November of 20. Wow. So, yeah. And you're the, are you the magic? Is that, is that uh, what's, it's, no. No. Oh, uh, I beg to differ. I mean, I, I, I love uh, Coach, <laughs> Ott, Coach Donnie Ott and uh, Coach Cammie Williamson and the players. Um, yes, of uh Two young ladies in Division One, 
I, I didn't catch what that said. Be off the. She says 28 people are watching and listening. Well, hello everybody. Thank you for sticking it out with us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um. You can check out my. I don't know if I have it on Twitter, but championship ring. That was that was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, to be a part of the team like that, because Coach Ott has been so gracious and welcomed me and keeps me included. And man, I, I get to ride on the team bus and all that kind of fun stuff. So. Uh, very, very blessed to do what I do and know who I know. So we have set a record. I don't want to jinx it. The rain literally is lightening up. Lighten. Is that the right? Lightning? Letting. There we go. Letting. Letting up. Up. We're down to 12 minutes. So 18 minutes have passed in this particular delay of the 30. Every time uh, the lightning had struck, the delay clock went back to 30 and uh, the rain is oh, not as intense I'm hearing and the fog I thought I heard uh, the announcer there they're not they're not stacking their papers yet no they are not we're up here in the press box right next to the scorers booth next to the scorers booth and to the right we have the Vista Ridge coaches So yeah, it said that the Christina said some folks listening in. Yeah, appreciate probably that. wondering what the heck. Yes. Can we call call some football here? What are these what are these deep, guys doing? Deep thoughts with Trey and Michael. <laughs> the Grub Rose. <laughs> and now Deep Thoughts. That's right. By Jack Handy. So So what was that uh Ro Red Rose, Red Red, what was what was the the, the movie, Rosebud, oh Rosebud, <laughs> Rose Grub, Rose there, Grub, Rose Grub, Deep Thoughts with Rose Grub. I was thinking of Madeline Kahn and uh, Young Frankenstein. Oh my gosh, those no, are some good shows. It was it was Blazing Saddles. Oh, Blazing, so oh, good. Red Rose. Oh my gosh, How romantic. She passed away a few years back. Yes, she did. She was so wonderful. And Mel Brooks, man, going strong yes, he in is. the late 90s. God I think bless he's in him. his late 90s, I mm -hmm. think. Funny, dude. So good. Yep. Did you ever see uh, Comedians in Cars getting coffee? No. Jerry Seinfeld? I did show not. Show on Netflix? You enjoy it. I, w I will he, watch he it. takes comedians to coffee and has a 30-minute interview. Riding around in some cool cars. He goes to Mel Brooks' house. Did you know Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner lived together? I did not know that. Yeah. That makes sense, though. Yeah, they're roommates. That's pretty funny. That's a, it's a powerhouse of comedy. Man, right I there. bet you that's some interesting stories at the dinner table. Mm -hmm. Okay. The moth is still there. It I think is. that's a good sign. That's absolutely a good sign. We are, we are blessed beyond belief. Look at that. Look at the picture. That yeah. you're putting out. Oh, by the way, Trey Grubb. Let's let's hear it for Trey Grubb, camera operator, producer, color analyst, and all around great guy. This guy is doing literally for. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You, you didn't know there were all these people in the back. Hush now. <laughs> Hush now. Let let it go. Oh, okay. Thank you all. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect timing. I didn't even know you were going to oh follow me on that, but you did. I'm ready. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can zig. When you <laughs> zag, I got it. See? Yeah, I, so, I, couldn't, I couldn't follow that. So we must tell the story of how uh, Michael and I became soulmates. Yes. We were, we were doing a broadcast of a semi-pro football game. In Colleen? In Colleen at Fort Hood Stadium. Oh, my goodness. We had to we had to leave early so we could get our pass to get on the base. Mm, and that's we had right. To, we had to go and get our pass. And then uh, for those of you who may not be familiar with semi-pro football, it's a bunch of uh, mm. uh, not washed up, but old, older older folk who, have, who <laughs> still love the game, and they pay to play. <laughs> and, and see, oh, okay. oh, goodness sakes. Do you remember? Do you remember number ninety nine? Yes, I do. I remember number ninety nine. He had to do everything. He did. He had a punt. He had to do field goals. He had to do kickoffs. He couldn't tuck in his jersey. He couldn't. 
He really didn't need a helmet because it really didn't fit. No. But sweetheart, big dude, sweetheart of a man, big dude, just wanted to play ball. Yep. You know. Uh. uh mm. So. <laughs> so the game. It was really cool to call. Um, we we were in our booth right there calling the game, and there were just some moments that bond two people forever. Just bond them forever. And the first of those moments, well, there were some little ones, like they could not figure out who could do kick. No. Couldn't. It wasn't, wasn't happening. Mm -mm. And I don't know which one happened before the other, but the first thing that I remember is they tried to do a field goal. Yes. And I'm pretty sure it was 99 that it tried was. it. He was the kicker. And it, he kicked it, and it, I don't know, it was probably, what, a 35-yarder? Yeah. Something like that. So he was kicking it from, like, the 25, mm -hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So he kicks it, and it's a line drive. Like, <laughs> like Barely cleared. How, how they don't the block line. it, I'm <laughs> pretty much guessing they're like, yeah, I ain't standing up. No. I'm tired. I ain't standing up. Because if one of them stood up, <laughs> We'd hit done. In the face. Done. So it's a line drive. And it bounces uh, probably about the 20 or about the 15, bounces again at about the 10, and both of us are watching. And the ref, you know, the referees, they're standing on both sides of the field goal bars, right? Yep, they have to look up. So they're looking up, ready for it. And that ball goes bam, bam. One of those skip passes we're it's talking about. Skip pass. Boom, boom, boom. Bam, hits that referee right in the face. <laughs> Just Plants him. Knocks his hat off. Knocks his hat off. And I'm pretty certain he said no good. <laughs> he did. Pretty certain. Because he's a professional. He's a professional. Hit him in the face, knocked his hat off. I don't think it knocked him to the ground. Don't think it did. But that man had the professional courtesy to still let everybody know that the football that hit him in the face <laughs> did not go over the bar. <laughs> No good. Not even close. And I'm pretty sure the other guy on the other side was like, yep, no good. He also waved it off. Correct. No good. So he confirmed the face hit. So mm -hmm. that's the first thing I remember. <laughs> and the, the situation was basically like you just heard it. Exactly. Me doing that and Michael not being able to talk. <laughs> He is talking way more than he talked in that moment. Pretty sure he was on the ground. I was. I took a knee. I couldn't. He could not handle it. So he's laughing, and we're we're gonna plow through. We're gonna plow on. Same team. Can I just interject real quick? Please. You. Uh, that was stop and play because the play was over, right? Yes. And so, um, <laughs> you said Michael Rose has lost it, so we're going to take a quick break so he can regroup. <laughs> so you send it to a quick spot, and I was able to pick myself up hey, off man, the floor. I got your back. And I'm a, I had to be a professional, too, but I had tears in my eyes. That I had was to get, uh, the I had funniest, <laughs> God bless you moment in my career as a broadcaster. And I will thank God I was with you. Because I will, we can... That was so Monty Python. Because, like, we're both watching it going, yep, that's, yep, that's, I don't think we said it live. But if I know we both thought it. That's going right at him. Why doesn't he move? He's not going to move. Oh, he's okay. He's a professional. He's not going to move. Like, like, if I could have a redo... I'd be like, Michael, he's not moving. That was back in the day of KMAC Sports' audio broadcast, so we couldn't... Yes, yes. Couldn't we had to be very film. visually uh, <laughs> wordy. So, the second thing, there were many. There, there were, were many. But the second wonderful thing that happened... Another special teams moment. Yes, another special... I, I can't even tell you who won. I think there was actually a really good running back. Yes. Um, but, so... I think it was a, was it the same number ninety nine or was it was a different no, guy? No, it was number nine. It was number nine. That's mm -hmm. right, number nine. And they had tried a few punters, like a couple, <laughs> couple, probably more than a couple, and they were having a hard time. So number nine goes out there. Hey, hey, I'll give it a shot. Sure, I I can do this. Mm -hmm. It's punting. What are you talking about? 
Let me, I just hike it to me, dude. Let's go. Let's go. So, gets it, plants that foot, looks like a pro. Boom! Straight up in the air. 90 degrees. 90 degrees straight in the air. And that dude went, all right, and started walking to the side. <laughs> his shoulders <laughs> fell to his ankles. He just was dejected yep. and walked off the field. He's like, y'all can have it. I'm out. Boom. I'm out. <laughs> Hunting is not for this guy. Nope. He's got two thumbs and it's not a punter. This guy. Number nine. So, yes, it went straight up in the air. And when I said that, <laughs> when I said, Michael, that went straight in the air. That was it. <laughs> Mr. Rose, that was it. That was it. I, probably, I don't know, 10 minutes? It was. There was it was, it was just not going to happen. It was. <laughs> I, I took a pause. I took a break. Came back. It wasn't uh, going to happen. So, <sighs> yes, it was wonderful. Now, I don't even remember what happened. I, I don't remember if the other team got it. No. Because I just watched him walk off. He's like, I'm not tackling anybody. <laughs> I'm not no. going to catch it and run. No. I'm out. I, I paid my dues. I'm pretty sure at the end of the broadcast, I went to find the coach of the team oh, and said, uh, hey, we did our best. Mm. <laughs> it may not be the best broadcast, but... Sorry about that. Because <laughs> there's no way in the world those coaches didn't see that ball go straight in the air and have a bet on the side and say, "Told you, yeah. pay up, dude." I told you that thing wasn't going to go more than five yards. <sighs> no, that was a. Thank that you was, for that. And you know, one of the things that uh, Michael and I are quite good at is life is serious enough. Mm-hmm. There are, you know, we were just talking about miles. We we're just talking about our children, um, talking about things. And so life is serious enough that, you know, when something can make you smile, make you laugh, you just roll, mm -hmm. go with it. And if you can bring that forward, there's not a person that couldn't make <laughs> me laugh more than Miles Hutchinson. That dude, oh my goodness, he would make us laugh. Oh, it was just so <laughs> wonderful. But, that was something he always had, yeah. he, and he had a unique laugh. Like, you knew it was Miles laughing. Oh, nice. Yes, you knew it was Miles that was <laughs> laughing. So, you know, uh, life gets serious at times, and so taking a moment to smile, laugh, and do that with others, mm -hmm. I mean, there's just nothing, you know, live, laugh, love, right? That's what the thing says? That's right. We did a whole lot of laugh on that on that. Uh, Watching that game broadcast. Yeah. I don't want to bring it down. Please. But we're back to 11 minutes because they reset it to 20. Okay, so, so. it looks like uh, Suna has now gotten into the game. She, hi, Suna. Yeah, she's actually inside our computer. <laughs> do, 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 so maybe we're having streaming do, 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 do. issues or something. Looks because like. Because of, yep, we're having streaming issues. Because of the weather, my guess is. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you and I aren't paying attention. Bar <laughs> barometric <laughs> pressure is weighing heavily on our signal. Wow. And I am uh, pulling this out of wow. thin air. But hey, you know what? We don't. Do you remember uh, when we couldn't see? Yes. And how fog had settled on top of us with the rain? It was coming down that hard. I know, it's just coming down a little bit. Standing water on the track, standing water on the field. We are down to 10 minutes, exactly, in this left in this delay. Oh. <clears throat> hope you didn't just jinx. I hope not either. It's, still, it's, so, it's always so interesting to watch somebody else in your laptop. Mm? Just weirds, weirds me out. <laughs> it does. Weirds, weirds me out feels like very science fiction-y to me. I served at church for a long time, and I, that happened to me shortly after I bought my laptop, the church laptop, and all of a sudden there's someone hacking into my computer. That was very scary. It was not someone like Suna. It was a complete stranger. And so in this instance, it's good to see that it's, it says team viewer, so we know that it's a good person. 
Not sure what that means. She says, I'm going to pull up the buoy game. Oh, she's going to have a little, little action for us. So she's just going to, if you're tuning into this broadcast, you're just going to click over to the buoy uh, opening game and we'll uh, let you listen into that and we'll come back and give you updates as often as we are able and or told. Is that a sign of how good our conversation has yeah, been? I think soon has had enough. <laughs> <laughs> and alrighty, and we're done. <laughs> so again, this is a weather delay. We will be, according to our QA and S Christina Weber and Sina Venkat, our IT guru. We are gonna go back and let you listen into and watch a little bit of the buoy game that was opening week two weeks ago. Eight minutes and fifteen seconds left to go in this weather delay. We'll let you know what's going on when we come back. Thanks for listening and watching Vista Ridge Ranger football here on Vipe Live. Okay, folks, I'm going to bring us back. Um, the idea was to try to get the Bowie uh, Dale Valley game audio so that you all could hear that while it's going on. And it's having a tough time loading on my system because of the weather that's happening here. So you're just going to get us again. And Mike has taken a quick little step out. He is now back, unbeknownst to him. We're we're back, and I, I'm sorry I don't have the music to play for you. 
Yeah, but, that's all right. You didn't know you'd have to do play by play as well, giving play by play of my actions tonight. Yeah. That's pretty, now you have five jobs. My so, goodness. So the idea, you know, a fantastic idea from Suna was to play the audio uh -huh. of the Del Valley um, buoy game. Buoy, yeah. I got mixed so up. Folks, I didn't realize it was so going to be. So that folks could, you know, listen to that instead of us. Sure. Which, you know, she meant no disrespect. No, no. No. I appreciate giving us a little at break. all. Uh, but um, it is unable to come through, just having some trouble uh, in terms of running that on the system. So, yep. And so uh, they're not going to have that. Okay. They're having us. Right on. We're down to three minutes, 30 seconds left in this delay. And the word is that uh, at the end, when the clock hits zero, even with the rain, the players will be coming back out onto the field. So uh, we're going to play some football, evidently. And I, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of Isaac Garcia. It is <laughs> ten, 10 to nothing. Uh, Clemens on top. Two costly turnovers by the Vista Ridge Rangers set up those 10 points. Uh, as you can tell, we have uh, um, the, the second score was that field goal. Vista Ridge defense coming up big time. It was first and goal at the 9. A penalty knocked him backwards, or, and uh, a couple other uh, great plays and keeping him in close range. And now all of a sudden, uh, the field goal unit came out and knocked a 30-yarder through the uprights to make it 10 nothing. So that's where we stand. That we're now two minutes 30 seconds away. So I do appreciate Christina Weber and Sun Van Cat for stepping in and trying to give us a little reprise, as it were. Yeah. And uh, I'm just sitting here trying not to mess this up. I, it's 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 got to go another two minutes and nine seconds. Yeah, we got this. And uh, yeah, it, it, as best we can say, it's clearing up. Not oh, sure if we're gonna now get we're any. Done. That was that blew it right there. Well, with the two minute warning, so can all no, right, can no longer see the the sky, so can't tell where the clouds are. Just tell it it's raining. Well, we have uh, we we have water now on the window here, mm -hmm. and, and our no friend mouth. is gone. Said I'm out. Yep, he 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 or she, I don't know about moss, <laughs> but he or she basically said that's enough for me. Yep, I'm out. So I do see uh, some folks down with their umbrellas. See the fans, well, kids playing in the water. Man, did you enjoy playing in the rain when you were young? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, my gosh. I enjoy playing in the rain as an adult, too. It's kind of fun. Gosh, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Oh, my lordy. Riding my uh, my my dirt bike through the, the puddles and uh, jumping in the, in the uh, our, our driveway had uh, two cracks that kind of like the Tigris and Euphrates. It made this V and it sunk <laughs> and this puddle was there and it got pretty deep over time. And uh, Oh, count it down. Are we going to really gonna, we're at 30 seconds. D zero. Oh. I'm going to knock on wood. That was my head that you heard. <laughs> we have coaches coming back on to No, that those are water Ah, the water boys and girls. That's nice. important. Got to have them come back out. 10, 9, 8, 7, Ooh. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Lenoff Stadium here in Church, Texas. Michael Rose, Trey Grubb, Christina Weber, Sooner Van Kent, a cast of characters like you wouldn't believe. The Vista Ridge Rangers coming back on the field. Going to get loose once again. It's 10 to nothing. Welcome back from a very long, very, very long, <laughs> very long weather delay. <laughs> uh, when you said 3, 2, 1, I almost yelled Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy Spiritual New Year. Yes. Fans are coming back in. And we've got some diehards that are, that are, that are sh waving their wet shirts around. <laughs> Like, yeah, come on, boys, let's go. Let's do this. Let's go. 
It's just rain. <laughs> just rain. It's just a little water. So um, one of the games that I did that actually had a rain delay and a lot of rain, they it wasn't a turf. Like it oh, was grass. It was grass. So yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun to watch. I bet. Worried about the kids, but right. oh my gosh, it was fun to watch. Mud, dirt. Oh, it's just so neat. It's one of those Tide commercial games. <laughs> Again, if you're watching, listening, and you want to tweet at us, if you have a shout out, if you want to say hey to one of the players or anybody, you know, your nephew, brother, cousin, <laughs> want to say hello to them, please shoot us a note. We're happy to do it for you. You know, one of the things about, you know, I've talked to coaches about this. It never happened to me coaching basketball, right? Mm hmm um, only, well, that's not true. We lost electricity a few times, but it's really nothing like this. To go from playing football to going and sitting yeah. to then needing to warm up again, I mean, it's tough on the muscles. It's tough on the, the mental side of the game. Um, it'd be interesting to hear what they talked about in there, what they did. How did the coaches keep them sharp? How did the coaches keep them, you know, ready to play, wanting to play? Right. Um, so it's tough to come out and do that, but it's also like a do-over. You know, I've seen games where teams struggling, you have a weather delay. Um, I know it's happened to the Longhorns a few times, mm -hmm. and then they come out after the delay, and it's just on fire. So, Watching the, the kicker here for Clemens kicking off on the 50, going across the field instead of down. Very interesting. He's just trying to kick it to one of the Vista Ridge folks over there watching the game. <laughs> yes. So I'm going to take a quick break. Okay. I'll cover for you. It's the least I can do. The uh, clock back up to seven minutes. Uh, 6.45 left to go here. Just letting the teams... Come back out and get loosened up once again. Michael Rose here, Trey Grubb, Christina Weber, and Sinvain Cat all bringing you the action tonight. Thank you for being with us. We are just concluding a very lengthy weather delay. Ten to nothing is the score. And, uh, oh, my goodness, I'm going to see if I can do this justice. Probably, maybe, hopefully. Let's see if I can I'm gonna shoot it over here. If you all want to go outside, wherever you may be, we have... I'm a, I'm a weather or not a weather buff, but right there, the there we go, the full moon coming behind the clouds. So if you like to go outside and have an affinity for seeing seeing nature and taking taking a look at that, we'll get you over here. Here's our Rangers getting loose. Figure Trey is having a lot of fun running the camera tonight. We'll give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on. You can see the Rangers getting loose and I'll pan it up here to the, the scoreboard if I can. There it is. Hello. Down to five and a half minutes to go. You can see it's ten to nothing. That's the score. The Rangers will have the football as uh, the <coughs> Shirts Clemens had kicked it off. I'm not sure if we're going to pick it back up where we left off or if we will have them kick it off once again. So we'll... Uh, We'll figure it out as we go along. And uh, I'm not sure if it's like baseball where they keep it as is or they just start with a, a fresh kickoff. But uh, you know, we're all here together to figure that out. So Clemens getting loose as well. I guess I'm just having a little fun. And, of course, the Rangers wrench across the way as we are here at Shirts, in Shirts, Texas at Lenhoff Stadium. And now the full moon I showed you is going behind the clouds. So I'm glad I was able to show that to you, which was pretty darn cool, if I do say so myself. So I'm just going panning back and forth on your camera, Trey. Having a good time. I showed him the full moon, which is, you can barely see it now, but it's coming through the clouds there. 
Very nice. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very nice. Very nice, indeed. Yeah, that's pretty that pretty dope. Oh yeah, that a boy. Down to 4:05 to go here before we get back to the action. So, you uh, ready? I'm, I guess. Yeah, I hope so. And as you can see, the uh, well. The Sorry weather is cooperating. That's yeah, the weather say. is cooperating, and you know they make these stadiums. Um, you know, when you go out on a football field, it always kind of weirds you out if it's one of your first times because it's it's not flat. No, right, and and it's designed that way so that the water comes off of it. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not you know round, round, round. No, but it's not flat. Exactly. It's got a little curvature of the spine to it. Ooh. A little scoliosis, as it were. I don't know, I just made that up. But. Hey. Strong. Dope. <laughs> Dope. There's the full moon. There's come back out. Yeah. Saw something interesting the other day. It is a shot of all of the uh, Starlink mm. uh, satellites. Mm -hmm. All going across the sky because when they put them up there, they're like, you know, I'm sure they're quite a far apart in real life, but right. looking up there, they look very close. Right. It's a very weird thing to see. That is cool. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's kind of crazy, but he does some pretty cool stuff with Tesla and SpaceX yeah. and Starlink. Especially the the design of his rocket ships. That's uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, pretty unique as well. So there's an image for everybody. Tesla You're moved welcome. all their stuff to Austin. They did. Yeah, he's actually now a member of the Austin community. We're getting close here, Michael. We are two minutes to go, y'all. Two minutes left here before we get back to the action 10 to nothing is the score Vista Ridge will have the football I, mean, I was just telling everybody I'm not sure if they're going to kick it back off to Vista Ridge or if they're just going to put the ball where it was when they when they were about to start I would so, imagine they would start off where they started out so I don't, I don't unless remember unless we're, we're going to get a complete duo I don't remember if they're going to re because <laughs> the we were left off was the kickoff after the field goal ah so, I see so I'm not sure if they're going to kick it off again or if they're going to put it Wherever the ball was, and I don't remember where the ball was. Oh well. So somewhere out there. So oh, I'm gonna sing. Don't don't do it. Almost did. Fivel. Fivel mouse. Man, I really wish somebody would tweet us. <laughs> Please. Be tweeted. Could you twit my? Nope. Tweety, don't tweety uh, friend. <laughs> Inside a minute, Trey. Inside a minute. And that's why I'm getting up. On your feet. On my them. feet. Let's go. You suppose suppose we could uh, get a little bit of that crowd we had? Oh. <laughs> Pump back up. Absolutely. Get us, get us going. Absolutely. Where, wherever they went. Y'all come back inside. We're going to do this one more time. Just get the crowd pumped up here. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Let's go, y'all. Yes. Thank you. I, for one, am pumped. Trey's awesome. Trey's awesome. Did you hear that? I did. did you hear him yelling yeah, back there? Sweet, kinda, huh? Yeah, that's Yeah, Trey's awesome. Nice. That's just Trey so, is awesome. Yeah. 6.03 to go in the first quarter. 10-0 to score. We are going to have a kickoff. Rumgard was going to kick it back to Vista Ridge again, ten to nothing. So they will have this kickoff. I couldn't remember if we actually had the kickoff or not. Evidently, we didn't, so we're going with that. I do not believe we did. I think you're right. I just now that watched. is a real crowd. It is. We mean real. This is another part of a real crowd. Just come on now. It's true. That wasn't like it was canned or piped in. No. 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 And away we go. 6.03 left. 
I about to look through my bottle of Dr. Pepper to see that uh, Isaac Montgomery's back deep. Along with... Looks to be Sion or Murray who brought it back up the field and he gets brought down at the 15. Tried to break a couple tackles, but uh, Tyon Murray, the returner, gets up to the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Rangers with 5.57 to go. Well, and the, the, and the key, we've talked about it many times, it's those mistakes because the fundamentals of the game, they're doing well, you know. Offense, defense, but they need to limit their mistakes. See how they do this half. Two receivers to the near side. Harold takes the snap. Hand off Garcia. Garcia bounces to his left. Tries to get up across the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a foot or two. Not quite a yard on the first carry of this uh, fresh drive for the Rangers. Yeah, the Clemens defensive line won that battle there. Got into the backfield and left no room to go. Harrell handoff, Garcia up the middle, gets up to the 20-yard line. Gets stopped by a herd of Buffaloes, and it gets up after a gain of four. It'll be third down in about four and a half or five. You've been waiting all night to say that? I heard, heard of Buffaloes. I have. All right. I have heard of Buffaloes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> third down. Third and four for the Rangers. Trips coming to the near side. No backs in the backfield. Pro set here for the Rangers. Harrell in the shotgun. Surveys the field. 14 seconds on the play clock. Now down to 10. Still looking around. Takes a snap. Drops back. Now rolling to his right. Going to take off running up to the 25. Tries to get the edge. Gets flung out of bounds. Close to the first down marker. We'll see where they put him. It looks like he's going to get right at the 25 yard line. Which is exactly what they needed for a Rangers first down. First down. It is. And I'll move the sticks. We talked about it last week. I really want to see him run more. I think he's got good decision making. He's got good legs. Zion Harper checking in for Garcia. And he'll be in the I formation behind Harrell. Two receivers actually trips to the top. Monk, uh, Harper gets the handoff. Dives up across the 25 to the 27. Gain of two. It'll be second and eight. We're going to see that probably more now uh, where the ball was slippery. It popped through, popped through his hands. Yeah. And Harold had a hard time getting it to the back. That kind of timing, when you lose seconds, it it's always helps the defense. Two receivers to each side. Now Harold has Harper go out of the backfield in motion. Hitch. Another hitch. Now he's rolling out to his left, looking to throw. Has a receiver going downfield over the top. Incomplete. Oh. Harper was there, just out of his reach. Third down and eight for the Rangers at the 27-yard line. Good job by Harrell keeping that ball in his hands, trying to buy some time, and, of course, the, the big men up front keep it, giving him some time to do so. Well, and he does a good job of putting it where only his guy's going to get it. Two receivers to the each side. Murray going in motion to the far side. Plenty of time for Harrell looking to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Has a receiver go down field. It's caught. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Rangers. Tyon Murray with the catch. Right over the top of two defenders. And it's six points on the board with 3.51 to go here in the first quarter. Wow. Yeah. And I kind of lost where the ball was. Dang. But I did get the touchdown. I missed the first one. 73-yard touchdown pass, Yeah. Trey. That is a way to get started. Extra point is good. Thank you. And with 351 left in the first quarter, it is your Vista Rangers, Vista Ridge Rangers, 7 and Clemens 10. Just like that, we're back in the game. We just needed a weather delay, get reset, refreshed, and then here we go. So evidently... Probably has a lot to do with the uh, the Rose Grub. It did. Deep deep talk. It did. We, we really inspired people. <laughs> and uh, I think 
kudos to the coaches for getting with their their different uh, personnel and uh, talking some shop. So wow, what a great connection! We were talking with the uh, the folks broadcasting for Clemens, and uh, it wasn't very disparaging, but just remarking on how uh, haven't seen a lot of uh, potent offense, but uh, Jackson Harrell with the big arm right there in the rain, no less, and a great ball over the top of those two defenders. And Murray just took off for the house. Well, it's like you were saying, you know, we're probably going to see probably going to see a lot of Garcia, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Well, come out with a little bit of surprise and throw the ball. Right. Caden Cornwell to kick it off for the Rangers. See a New Orleans Saint onside kick here. <laughs> nope. Puts his leg into this one and angling towards the near side. Up off the ground, fielded inside the 10, up to the 10. Now coming into the middle, gets the edge, and now he's not going to get much more than that. Great coverage. See if the defense can hold this to a three and out. Wow. The defense came up real big for Vince Ridge back in the first uh, first few minutes of the opening quarter. Long time ago. <laughs> Ball placed at the 16-yard line, first and 10. I think, yeah. Looks like Clements has called a timeout. They did. Probably wondering what happened to him. <laughs> I don't think they had the right personnel when they went out on the field for that opening play. So the first time out of the evening goes for Clemens, two remaining for them, three for the Rangers. 3.45 to go here in the first quarter. Rangers come back after a long rain delay, and they score with a 73-yard touchdown pass from Jackson Harrell to Mr. T and Murray. First and 10 for the Buffaloes. Two receivers to the top of the screen. They're moving from right to left in those royal blue and yellow uniforms, the white helmets. Runner coming in motion to the near side. Handoff up the middle. Gets to the 20, still on his feet to the 25, up to the 30. Spun around and dropped close to the 35-yard line. Doubled up his yardage. A gain of 17. Make that 18 to the 34. And actually make the 19 now as the nose of the football touching the 35 yard line. One receiver to each side, two backs in the backfield. Snap to Alvarez. Ball is the RPO handed to Luther. Bebley, and Bebley is knocked backwards, a loss on the play, all the way back to the 30-yard line. It's second down and 15. Yeah, I believe that's Vista Ridge's uh, defense's third play for loss. They're doing a good job of getting in the backfield, breaking things up. Tremendous job. One receiver to each side, those two backs in the backfield. In the offset eye and pistol I should say Alvarez Nathan Alvarez the quarterback for the Buffaloes goes up to the line re and another looks like a wow. timeout taken as the play clock went all the way down to zero and had to burn their second timeout of this possession I like where this is going I sure do too yeah, I don't know what the mis if there's miscommunication or just trying to change a play if they're seeing something. But again, like you said, Trey, the Rangers' defense is just doing a tremendous job right now. Trying to give the folks a little view of that moon up there. I appreciate that. Look at that. Full moon. Full moon running through tomorrow, so... Bad moon rising. <laughs> 2.28 to go here in the first quarter. 
again, you're, if you're just joining us, uh, why would it be the first quarter when the game started nearly two hours ago? That would be because we had a lengthy weather delay. Second and 15 for the Buffaloes at their own 30-yard line. Alvarez looking to throw. Quick throw. Tipped in the air. Incomplete. Falls haplessly to the ground. Good defense as the uh, Bristol Ridge Rangers is able to get a hand up on that pass and knock it to the ground. Third and 15 now. Perfect opportunity here for the Rangers defense. Trips to the near side for the Buffaloes. One receiver to the top of the screen. Receiver coming in motion. Alvarez dropping back, looking to throw. Puts the, some air underneath it. Oh, intercepted at the 50 to the 45, up to the 40. Still his feet to the 35, moving to the far side. 25, 20, over to 15, making his way to the end zone. 10, 5, touchdown, Rangers. Oh, my gosh. Sion Allen. But a flag coming down. It looks like we might have a block in the back. But what a great return. That was a can of corn up there for the defensive back. The no. ball, ball will remain with It looks to Rangers, me like that was a uh, maybe a roughing the passer. Oh, boy. Where's the, where's the referee to make the call? Uh, it, so that's been something all night. He's been making those calls very quickly. And it's, it's, and he does not oh, mic'd up, my by the way. heavens. So, yes, 15 yards. So you can see that that was that. a roughing the passer. So that takes six points off the board. That's enough to make the Pope cuss. Ooh. <laughs> that's... A third and 15, now we get 15 yards, make it first down, and negates the interception. Alvarez, handoff up the middle, Bebley gets up close to midfield, knocked backwards, but they'll give him forward progress up to the 50-yard line. So second and five now. Inside, two minutes to go here in. I'm not sure why the clock stopped. Now it restarts. That shouldn't have happened. 10 seconds on the play clock. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Two backs in the backfield. One receiver here to the bottom. Alvarez in the shotgun takes a snap. Hand off to Bebley. Bebley gets around the right side up across the 50. Up to the 49 and gain him one. It'll be third and four. Not the third down and long that you want to put them in. And we're going to. But. And I, that was weird. I also. Oh. Have an injury. Yeah. The injured Buffalo over on the far side. Looked like he just went down. Yeah, it's always, always, you know, you tell the kids, it's always better. If you're hurting, stop. Don't don't push through. Let us come out. You know, see how you're doing. Always better to do that mm -hmm. than to risk further injury. Right, exactly. Cause, so Christina was saying that uh, another broadcast did a shot of the moon, and it was red. Ooh. Oof. It is the harvest moon, so that is usually the color it does appear. So there we go. That's awesome. I like blood red moon. Mm. That sounds so much better than harvest moon. Well, cue That's up not a little. scary at all. Cue up a little uh, Neil Young right there. Ah. And I'm not going to sing. I want to. So speaking of Neil Third Young. Third time tonight I wanted to sing. I'm not going to do that to y'all. Speaking of Neil Young, I just listened to the Elton John biography. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about the Elton John biography. There we Me. Go. Really good. Really, really, really good. Nice. Very open, very vulnerable. Uh, 
quite refreshing someone of that kind of status to be open about um, vulnerable things for them. It's very, very cool. Sure. And yes, that had nothing to do with uh, Neil Young, but if you haven't and you like Elton John, I highly recommend it. Or if you don't, I highly recommend it. <laughs> Third down and Elton John. Third and four for the Buffaloes. Beverly gets the handoff up across 45, 40, 35, 30. Still on his feet to the 20, 15, 10, 5. Tackle from behind inside the five. First and goal for the Buffaloes. Third, another big old third down conversion, but this one on the ground for the Buffaloes with inside a minute to go. MJ. With 57 seconds. Yeah, he broke out to the right there. Fantastic job chasing him down. I mean, you never know. So you got to play all the way to the end there. Gain of 46 on the carry all the way down to the three yard line. First and goal for the Buffaloes. Play clock just starts now. I don't know. Okay. The clock operators here are sus. What is sus? Suspect. Ah, okay. First and goal. Up back. Takes a direct snap. Tries to go forward on a little sneak right there. Doesn't get much. Maybe a yard. That'll so, be second goal at the... So I can't be sure, but... Maybe no game. That sure looked like um, they've seen that on film. It did, yes. The boys looked like that they had seen that on film and were definitely ready for it. Brandon Wright, the tight end, number eight. That's his second direct snap he's taken. This time he came right up in motion and under center. And that's going to do it for the first quarter. We'll switch have switch sides, excuse me. The first quarter is over. It's over. 10-7. Finally happened. Buffaloes are driving. It'll be second and goal at the three when, when we resume play. We'll take a quick break and bring you right back. Hey high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help! Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Welcome back to Vista Ridge versus Clemens here at Shirts in Shirts, Texas. Michael Rose, Trey Grubb, our QA back at Vipe Live. That's Christina Weber. Second and goal for the Buffaloes. Two backs in the backfield. Alvarez takes a snap, handoff. Bebley tries to bounce around the edge. He's going to be met by a swarm of Rangers. Knocked back for a loss on the carry to be third and goal. Uh, Austin led that one. He read that perfectly. This is the row. Thank you. And then number eight, that was uh, Grant Anderson. He gets up off the ground after the pile comes up. So nice job by the defenders of Vista Ridge. And again, it looks like it looks like Clemens is having personnel issues again. And the clock's starting a little later than usual. Mm -hmm. Seems to help with that. But yeah. play clock already under 10 now. Two receivers at the top of the screen. Alvarez takes a snap and sheds one defender and cannot avoid the others as he's sacked for a loss way back at the 12-yard line. Oh, my gosh. That was awesome. I believe that was Carson Smith coming up there on the blitz. I believe you're right. Yeah, he came right in the back. Alvarez had no idea what was going on. He got he avoided one, one for sure sack and then two more players coming in there. So here comes... Ethan Brumgard for another field goal attempt. This one from uh, 29 yards out. Snap, spot, kick on the way. It is up. Plenty of distance. And it is good. 13 to 7 with 10 minutes and 31 seconds to go here in the second quarter. 
So, like I talked about, running him down, right, and making that tackle inside the five, that's why you never stop. Exactly. That's why you never, ever stop, especially in football um, or, or in basketball, chasing down to get the block, mm -hmm. right? You just, you never quit. Yes. And that tackle, I mean, that's a three-point, four-point tackle. That's a four-point tackle. You're exactly right. Great job by the Vista Ridge defense. Kudos to the players and the coaches and just the uh, awareness. Like you said, Trey, they saw that that play before the half ended on film. They're able to stuff that sneak. And uh, nice job reading that, picking that up. And, and of course, uh, great coverage sack and blitz right there to knock Alvarez back. So Brumgard kick it off. Kicks it deep, end over end. Going to be fielded by Murray. Murray's going to take it out of the end zone and be smacked as he gets up close to the 10-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Rangers at the 9. I mean, I'm all about being aggressive, but that's the second time now to bring it out of the end zone. And I understand the aggressiveness, and I understand wanting to try to make something happen. Yeah. But uh, that's a 15-yard loss, right? Would be at the 25. Is yeah. That right. Yep. You're right. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 a crucial 15 yards. So if it's going to go in the end zone, especially in high school, take the take the yards. Rangers coming back out on the field now. First and ten from the nine yard line. Roca going in motion. Coming near side is Garcia. He's met and knocked backwards. There'll be no gain on the play. It'll be second and ten. Knocked backwards is a very kind way to put that. Goodness yeah. gracious. Good read by the defenders of the Buffaloes, reading that one very well. Garcia in the eye behind Harrell. Harrell takes a snap, handoff Garcia, going to try it once again now on the other side. Runs into the line of scrimmage. He'll gain maybe a yard, a yard and a half as it gets across the 10. It'll be third down in about nine or eight. That was a weird play. It was almost like everybody just stood up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> There was no room, just like uh, the Rangers' defense, uh, you know, took a stand. Certainly looks like the uh, Buffaloes are hurting. Gosh, I, I didn't even get a comment on my Buffaloes hurting there. <laughs> I thought you said hurting like H-U-R-T. Sorry, I was trying to figure it out as I was watching the personnel change. Quick throw to the far side. Play gets up across the 15. They'll mark him right before the 15, however. Yeah, so four yards on that with some down. second effort. Punning unit will come on. So the Buffalo defense holds strong. Deuce kept back deep for the punt. Snap, and the punt gets away. Nice boot. Waiting for it. Backing up. And falling Boy. on his keister is number three for the Buffaloes. That was a 65-yard punt. Now, he doesn't get credit for all 65 yards. No. But he kicked it from the, so a 63-yard, because okay. he probably kicked it around the two-yard line, because mm -hmm. he caught it at the goal line. That is just. Uh, a 49-yard boot right there. 49? Well, oh, from the line of scrimmage? From the line of scrimmage. I hate that. I know. That is just so not fair. Yeah. What a. I mean, that's, a, that's just, that's, that's tremendous. Dynamite punt. By tremendous. The time. Alvarez takes the snap. Handoff coming near side is Bebley, and he's met and brought down by a couple of defenders. Hey, look who's back, Trey. Oh, the moth. Moth is back, 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 back again. Grant Anderson leading the way on that one. Another tackle for loss for the Rangers makes it second down and 13. So, uh, like I said earlier, it, you know, without knowing for sure, but it, it definitely, to me, looks like they've done a lot of good film work here. Reading the plays, reading the tendencies. Well, 
Rolling to his near side, throwing across his body. Great, Great defense right there by the Vista Ridge Rangers. Yep. That was number 24 on the coverage. That's Emmy Landers, senior line, or senior cornerback, I beg your pardon. Brings up third and 13. And you just can't, uh, you, there's no way to really help folks really understand how difficult man-to-man -man is on a crossing route. It is just so hard to stay with him. Just an outstanding play. Two receivers to each side. Blitz coming from the top of the screen. Good eye, Trey, yeah. That probably changed their play up, as a matter of fact. Snap to Alvarez. Blitz coming from the near side, and a, a flag comes from the referee, and another, another he throws his hat, too, so double penalty. I think he's going to call unsportsmanlike. I think that that was holding, but if I had to guess, he's going to call unsportsmanlike for in terms of what they've done all night. I sorry, I I hate to yeah. bag on the refs, but, no, but when if he calls if he calls an unsportsmanlike for getting excited about making a sack, I'm probably going to have to turn down my mic. Holding. Okay. Okay, he's calling it on both both of them against. Yep, he called uh, unsportsmanlike on. Um, on Clemens. Clemens. So I'm going to guess that one of the linemen was not excited. Oh yeah, I can see him down here, number 77. He's hot. Definitely not happy about that. And then he remembers. Ah, oh, yes, yes, yes. I need to be out there because we're going to punch. <laughs> Again, personnel issues here. Absolutely. And they, have, they haven't started the play clock yet either, which I don't understand. Oh, why my goodness. Don't even say that out loud to oh me. Oh, my that goodness. Just, that just, that, that, uh, yeah. What, why are they having a conversation? Well, the referee is not doing his little pump, pump thing. Oh, because they haven't marked it off yet. Oh, they declined the holding and are taking the, uns the unsportsmanlike. Whoa. Well. That's a loss of. That's pretty hard. I mean, I, I'm pretty. I doubt he needed to go check and make sure that's what they wanted to do. But that's a loss. That's a 23-yard penalty right there. Just <laughs> digging that. <laughs> Fourth down and San Antonio. That's <laughs> pretty much okay. From his own end zone will be the punter. That's Caden Turner. Oh, I'd like to see a high snap. Nope. At midfield is Tanner Brosey. Brosey coming up. He's muffed the punt last time. Did it again. He, no, he, he's got, they have to give him room to make the catch, and they didn't. I don't know if they're going to call that. They're not going to. He and did. It looks like he got hit. Brosey went up to make the play. He had to run up on it, and he couldn't get a control of it, so it is Clemens football at the 45-yard line. Well, waiting to see where the spot is, right around the 45-yard line. That just... I, he is. He's giving them the ball. It's Clemens football once again. Another missed opportunity on the punt. <sighs> well, you understand why he's going up to catch it. But yes. with the weather the way it is, in traffic like that, you just probably have to let that bounce. Because it's not a, you know, it's not a live ball in terms of, you know, the defense or the offense can go get it like they can on a kickoff. Percent. But you're right. He got interfered with. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Defense asked again to lift up the team. And they're perfectly capable of doing it. Alvarez hit as he throws. The skip pass incomplete. Good coverage right there. Again, by number 24, Emmy Landers. Yeah, the offensive line is having a difficult time with the Rangers' defense who seem to be a bit fired up after the rain delay. 13-7 mm -hmm. to 7 with 7.26 to go here in the second quarter. Michael Rose here along with Trey Grubb. This Ridge Rangers defense has had a lot of work to do tonight, but they have risen to the occasion, and it's only a six-point difference right now. Handoff coming near side. Bebley trips over his own shoelace right there, trying to make a cut, and another loss on the play back. 
all the way to the 41-yard line, a loss of three. Bebley hasn't had much production going in the right direction so far tonight. Well, that that brings up something that I'd love to talk about, and that's defense always putting pressure on the offense to have to make a play. Mm -hmm. And that time, getting guys into the backfield, they don't make the play, right? They don't make the tackle. Right. But they're putting so much pressure on Beverly had to have to make something happen, and he's not able to. Sometimes they can, sometimes they don't. Alvarez takes snap, rolling to one side, ball tipped in the air, incomplete. It'll be fourth down and 13 for the Buffaloes and the yeah. punting unit coming back again. Yeah, you're going to see that... Um, Probably going to see a little bit more of that with the ball being probably not as dry as you would like. So did they make a did they make a change on who's uh, who's that who's back here? Let's see. No, nope, Brosey's still good. back there. That's good. Yeah, absolutely. I'd I, like to see that. I applaud that as well. Tanner doing a, a great job, the best he can on. It's all learning moments right now. Turner's punt fielded at the 30, around the 30 yard line. A fair catch signaled by Brosey, and he'll have it first and 10 at the 30. So, I must say, good job by the defense once again. That had that had my throat in tight right there, running up, catching it at his feet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is a confident young man it sure right is. there, because. I understand why he's doing it. Making those catches like that, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you let it bounce, it could possibly be 10, 15, 20-yard difference. So I understand catching it. So here we go. First and 10 with 637 left in the second quarter. Harold takes the snap, drops straight back. Now rolling to his right, looking downfield. Has time, throws off his back foot, has a receiver. And we're going to get a full. Oh, my goodness. You need to make a call. That was oh my goodness. back. Come on. Oh, my goodness gracious. It's okay to trip him up. I get it. <laughs> okay. Cool. And grab his jersey. Okay. Wow. My goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, if I could play defense like that in, in football, I would be okay. That would be, that'd be fine. Second and 10 for the Rangers. Quick throw to the near side. Caught up at the 35. Still on his feet. Pushes it. Up across the 35 to about the 37. That's where they'll spot him. That was number 11. That's Isaac Garcia on the reception out of the backfield. Third that, and short for the Rangers. That's a fan, that's a really important yak right there. Yards after catch, right? He's able to make that first guy miss and get an extra three or four yards that makes this third down manageable. Trips to the far side. One receiver to the near side. One back in the backfield. Handoff. Garcia coming to the near side. Nice cut. Up across the 40. Spins and leans backwards as he crosses the 45 all the way up to the 47. And we got ourselves a late flag as we had some scuffling going on right there. That re referee sure likes to... Uh, throw oh, my gosh. Well, that's unfortunate. Number 19, James Hester. Junior wide receiver was getting into it with one of the defenders. Well, it's a dead ball, so they're going to get the first down. But, I mean, this isn't Pee Wee. Excuse me, but. I mean, you. Uh, I get it. No, you know what? I'm just being nice. I don't get it. I don't get it either. It's unfortunate. And like Trey said, it, it was a dead ball foul after. Uh, Garcia did a tremendous job of getting those extra yards and more than enough for the first down. And now they're going to they're gonna move the chains. This needs to be up here. Move the chains. Where he got the ball. Think yes. What are y'all doing? Okay. Well, that's all right. First and ten from the thirty-three. Running for his life. Harold gets out of one. And now he's going to go to the sideline, throws it as he gets near to the sideline. Very Hopefully, smart. Yes, very smart indeed as he was going to go out of bounds but wisely threw it away to not be tackled for a loss. Clock stops at 537. Three timeouts remain for Vista Ridge. They are uh, on the move, but a, a big penalty knocks him back. But it is second down and 10. Could be much worse. So as I would tell a player of mine, stop paying attention to the refs. Just leave, play ball. Leave that to the professionals up here. 
Another quick throw out of the backfield. Nice job eluding one tackle. Shirks his way up across the 35. Dives forward. That's number 20 on the catch. That's Wits, uh, Wit Sizikowski. Don't get to say his name very often, but a nice job by Witt making something out of nothing up across the 35 to the 36-yard line. It's fairly obvious passing down here. Wouldn't be surprised for a delay run, though. Receiver coming in motion. Harold takes a snap, dropping back. Now has to come near side, rolling. Throws off his back foot. Caught up across the 45. And... Oh my goodness, we get a, a little unnecessary roughness on that one too. Nice catch right there, Tion Murray coming out of the back. Was that number nine or number zero? I couldn't quite tell. Well, Harold did a really good job there. That's several times now where he's had to get outside the pocket to give his receivers time, right? And he's been able to do it and stay looking up the field. First and 10 for the Rangers at the 49-yard line. Runner in motion coming across the near side. Fakes the handoff, does Harrell has a run for his life. Throws off his back foot, going downfield. Throws it wisely out of bounds. It'll be second and 10 from the 49-yard line. Harrell doing a great job with his feet and his head this evening. Making yep. some good decisions. And he got shoved out of bounds. I'm pretty sure he just asked the ref... Why is that not? And the ref explained to him, because you're wearing white. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was Harper uncalled out of the for. backfield, empty backfield for Hill. Has plenty of time. Takes a couple of throws, spins out of one tackle, gets thrown forward across the 50-yard line into Buffalo territory, but it'll be third down and long once again. Ball up at the 48-yard line. You know, one thing I've noticed uh, this game, they're not going as fast as they did last week. No, they they are getting up to the line quickly, but they're not they're not pushing it as fast as they were last week. Four minutes to go here in the first half. The Rangers trail 13 to 7. Trips to the far side. Jackson Harrell all alone in the backfield. Two receivers to the near side. Another pro set here on a throwing down four. That's coming up the middle. For the Rangers. Dropping straight back. Now rolling to his right. Going to take off. Has plenty of space. Throws across his body, caught up across the 40-yard line, all the way up to the 36. A nice catch right there. That looks to be, that's number 19. A little redemption right there for James Hester. That's a scary throw. Across your body to the middle sure of the is. field. Glad all, he was able to make it. All of Brett Favre. Thank you very much, 2009 and 2005. Or 7, excuse me. Handoff. Up the middle, bounces to the left side, gets up across the 35, but they'll mark him. Actually, they will right on the other side of the 35-yard line, a gain of two on the carry. Maybe a yard and a half, I guess I should say. And one of the things about not running as fast is you do need, you do, you are able to get different personnel out there. Two receivers to the top of the screen, one to the bottom. Harold takes the snap, handoff Garcia, right up the gut, up to the 25, still on his feet, pulled down from behind as he gets all the way up to the 20-yard line. Another great play and great result, first and 10 for the Rangers up to the 20-yard line. Man, if it was only 70s and he had a tearaway jersey, that was a touchdown. It was. <laughs> yeah, Earl Campbell jersey. A gain of 15 for Garcia on that carry. Two receivers to the far side, two backs in the backfield. Oh. We got a false start by the wow. offense as we, a false snap, I guess you should say. Cause, that was a false everything. Yeah, the up back there hitched, and the ball didn't get snapped, and then, yeah. So we'll back it up five. It'll be first and 15 from the 25. I don't know if you've ever seen that in a football, I'm sure you have in a, one of a football game where everybody moves but the center. <laughs> he's just sitting there holding the ball. <laughs> yep. A bad snap. Garcia's going to fall on it. They did it again. Flag. Yeah, but it's a it's a false start again. Oof. I mean, that's 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 two in a row, y'all. Let's get our heads in this. Let's go. Well, yeah, and slow down. Right. You're Take having a great drive here. Everybody needs to concentrate. And twenties, twenties, twenties are. Okay, it looks like they're going to call a timeout here and, you know, 
discuss that a little bit. It's a good idea. First and 20. Probably good we don't have a microphone down there by the coaches. <laughs> Could be a little colorful. I think you're right. 228 to go here in the first half. 13 to 7 is Long the Long drive. When did that drive start? That started way back at 637 to go. Yeah. So we're down inside four minutes on this one. Way back at the 30-yard line. And that's where we are right now on the other side at the Buffalo 30. First and 20 on back-to-back -back false starts by the offense. But uh, a 15-yard 15, a 15 run by Garcia got him up to the 20. Yep. And now these penalties knocked him back a little bit. But... Yeah, Harrell good push up the middle there for Garcia. Oh, big time. Yeah, it was a good read, too, because like you said, you saw the pressure coming from up the middle, and Garcia's able to run right past the, the blitz. Yep. A great read right there by Harrell and, and Coach Scott and company. All Take right. advantage of the defense's aggressiveness. Mm -hmm. Misdirection plays, hesi you know, hesitation plays are great against a very aggressive defense. Two backs in the backfield. First and 20. Harold fakes the handoff. Throw to the near side. Murray over the oh, shoulder oh. catch. Touchdown, Rangers! What a catch. What a great basket catch over the shoulder. That was a thing of beauty, folks. Wow! 2.22 to go. We got ourselves a tie game. Waiting for the extra point. Well, and guess what? A great play happened for the Rangers. Dang. And there's no what? Flag. No flag, y'all. No flag. First and 20 and a 30-yard touchdown pass to Tian Murray. What a call. Wow. What a call. Great job, coaches. Beautiful. Cornwell for the extra point. Snap spot kick on the way. It is good. For the first time this evening, the Vista Ridge Rangers take the lead 14-13 to here at Lenhoff Stadium in Shirts, Texas. Michael Rose along with Trey Grubb. And Christina Weber, what a great catch. What a great oh ball. Oh, my goodness. That looked a lot like uh, what we saw last week from Georgetown, mm -hmm. right? A lot of those basket catches drop it in there with some nice touch. And that was not a 10-yard touch pass. No. Uh, yeah. That was a great play action. Garcia had everyone bit. And that was, that was gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. 2.22 to go. Here in the first half, and the Rangers with a one-point lead. Yeah, it's like we have a pre-rain and a post-rain game. <laughs> one team uh, took it to heart. The other one rested on their laurels. Ooh, look at you. All right, here we go. 222, three twos up there, Michael. That's right. A little synchronicity for us. Caden Cornwell to kick it back to the Buffaloes. Back deep. Let's have a muff kickoff That'd here. Be nice, huh? Yeah. Cameron Owens, one of the deep backs. It'll be fielded at the 12, up to the 15, to the 20. Still on his feet, 25, to the 30. Going to the far side, up to the 40. It's a foot race for the 50, 45, 40. Drug down from behind inside the 40-yard line. That's one heck of a return and a flag coming up after the play. So we'll have a dead ball fall. We have two flags, two flags and a player without his helmet. We have three flags and a player without his helmet. Four flags. Holy moly. <laughs> Still a player without a helmet. I think every single referee on the field threw a flag. My goodness. Goodness. Five flags. <laughs> Holy cow. How many flags do you see, kids? So there were <laughs> let's count the there flags. were two flags where the referee is at. There's a flag over here at the 30. <laughs> There's two flags down here. I think it's a penalty on the referee for throwing so many flags. <laughs> I, if you want to hear a couple of stories, you can ask me about how I handled the referees during a basketball game and what I thought of uh, referees during a football game a couple years ago when we get to the half. Wouldn't it be awesome love if to share basketball referees could throw flags? Oh, my goodness. Pink, right? Yes, just right in, I don't know, Kevin Durant's face. Bow. 
Throw it right up in the I air. love Kevin Durant, though. Yeah. But, so I probably shouldn't say that. But. Illegal block in the back. Penalty declined. Personal foul. On sportsmanlike conduct. Playing without your helmet. I don't uh, know what uh, that would be. No, it was a... He definitely... 44 was... Not happy about something. No, yeah, that was Sean Thomas. Yeah. Right side linebacker for... All right. Clemens, the ball. Let's keep this momentum going. Kickoff return all the way up across the 40, up to the 36, is negated Magic. and brought all the way momentum. back to the 12-yard line. First and 10 for the Buffaloes at the 12. Oops. Oh, your pin's not working. Nope. Trips to the near side. Back in motion. Handoff. Bebley, Bebley. Side steps, gets up close to the 15, but another flag on the play here on the near side. Man, they're, they're just... Let the kids play. Well, that's in a position right there for offsides or... Illegal formation. Nope. Face mask on the defense. Oh, my. So that's on the one of the defensive backs here. So that'll be a personal foul. Wow. Ball placed up at the t Just You just never, you, you never enjoy the referees being such a huge part of the game. And they are really affecting the game at the moment. But I'm going to stop talking about it. That's all right. Because people are probably doing a drinking game right now. But <laughs> every time Trey says something about the referees, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Alvarez takes a snap. Quick throw near side. In and out of the hands. Incomplete. Great job. Beautiful coverage right there and a great open field tackle. Knocks the ball out of his hands. Second down and 10 at the 30. Second down, 10. Back coming. Player in motion. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, my bad. Handoff. Bebley cutting to the near side. Yeah, delayed handoff there. Great read by the defense. Clemens, definitely coaching staff, just trying all kinds of different things here to try to see what will work. And the Rangers defense is really stepping up and adapting or making an adjustment. They're seeing the game really well. Third down and five for the Buffaloes at the 35-yard line. Two receivers to the near side, one back in the backfield. Play clock winding down, game clock down inside a minute. Now handoff right up the middle. A gain of about a half yard, maybe a yard up. Looks like they can give him two as he gets up across 35 to about the 36 and a half yard line. Oh, they're going to, the official on the far side stepped to the 37. Now he steps back to the 36. So a gain of one. That brings a fourth down for the Buffaloes. Another great defensive stand for yep. the Vista Ridge Ranger defense. Timeout for Vista. That's their second. See so if they can use those 53 seconds. It'll depend on what kind of punt we get here, right? Mm -hmm. So as Trey just mentioned, 53, 5, 3 seconds left in this first half. The Rangers on top, 14 to 13. What an amazing turnaround it's been after that rain delay. Appreciate y'all sticking with us here. We're really, I'll speak for myself, maybe YouTube. I'm really glad we're calling football right now and not going home. Yeah. So appreciate it. Appreciate that very much. I sure hope they have a nice hotel here. <laughs> Caden Turner to kick it back to, punt it back, I should say, to the Rangers. Back deep. Waiting for that is, it's number one, Sion Allen. Oh, nice punt. Allen's going to call fair catch. Oh, lets it go. Ball on the ground. He'll oh, he's able to get back on top of it. Holy cats, y'all. Oh. He is just even he's, Allen's like he's struggling. I don't, I don't get it. Brosi had the last couple of punt returns and and it's just a it's a tough job, y'all. If, if go outside. Uh, nope, don't want it. 
and and have someone throw a football 30, 40 feet in the air. Especially if it's kicked straight up. Straight up. <laughs> <laughs> a 90 degree, just kick it to yourself. Hey. We, we've seen it done before. We've seen it done before. <laughs> Except for he, he left the field <laughs> in disgust of his, own, to do with it. of his own self. <laughs> so 45 seconds left with two timeouts. I would think you try to see if you can break something here, but you're not going to try, you know, don't want to risk too much. Harrell hands it off up the middle. Knocked Ooh. backwards. No gain on the play. Second down 10 from the 36. Excuse me, 26. Beg your pardon? Yeah. When you're this deep in your in your own side of the field with that, you know, with 20 less than a minute left in the game, you certainly don't, unless you get a big big play, you know, if you've gotten 10, 15 yards there, that, that changes what they do here. And it's pretty obvious to me looks that... Looks like they're going to let the play... Yeah, sorry. Didn't yep, step go right on ahead. That. I was going to say, it looked like they're... I saw the coaches waving him well, to the sideline. Well, since the play clock never started, I, I can't begin to tell you why I don't understand why the play clock doesn't start. Because <laughs> there was 26 seconds I, left. <laughs> and they didn't... They didn't... Oh. I mean, he, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he just... Yeah... Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you sticking with us. It's 14 to 13 at the half. I don't know if I think they're going to put more time on the, the clock. I don't. I think I they just have one halftime performance of Shirts Clemens Band tonight. Oh, looks like they're ready to go. I don't. I don't. I see oh, our wait, band over there. There's our band. There they are. Looks like they're going back to sit down though. Oh. I don't think they're coming out on the field. Well, that's a bummer. That makes me unhappy. They're an award-winning band. They sure are. So we're going to take some vocal maintenance, and we're going to probably stretch our backs and just relax a little bit. So we'll let you uh, see the sights and sounds of the halftime entertainment. 14-13, to 13, the halftime score. Michael Rose here along with Trey Grubb, our QA back at Vipe Live. That's Christina Weber. Thank you so much for being a part of the broadcast, y'all. We'll be back for the third quarter where the Rangers will... I'll kick it off to the Clemens Buffaloes uh, when we come back for the third quarter. Thanks for watching Vista Ridge Football right here on Vipe Live. Hey, high schoolers. Are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today.
give it up for your award-winning Samuel Clemens Mighty Buffalo Marching Band. Thank <laughs> you. 
Back to Lenhoff Stadium here in Shirts, Texas. Michael Rose, Trey Grubb, Christina Weber, our QA back at Viper Lab. Thank you all for being part of the broadcast tonight. This broadcast brought to you by the sponsorship and partnership of the Vista Ridge Ranger Booster Club. 14 to 13, the halftime score. Vista Ridge came storming back. It was 10 nothing 
after the rain delay, 10 to 7, then 13 to 7, and then the Rangers came back and went ahead. 14, 13, Camden Cornwell is gonna kick it off. At least he's gonna try to as the ball kind of slipped off the tee and he's gonna have to reset it. And we'll try this kickoff to start the third quarter. That's, that's good because I wasn't ready yet. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that was, that was the universe thing right there. Yep. Cornwell is going to put his foot into this one, end over end, angling to the far side, fielded inside the 10, caught, and coming up to the 10, no, angling to the near side, coming back up across the 15, to the 20, to the 25, cuts back, makes another move, across the 35 to the 40, and received a licking as he gets up across the 40 to about the 43. Yeah, that was a block in the back right in front of the referee right there that broke him free. Isaac Montgomery put his shoulder into the returner, but it's a great return in and unfortunate another missed opportunity missed call by these referees and I'm sure Merle Bertrand is going to get in my ear about take it easy on the refs because but you know when when you see something like that and you know I'm a human being can't help myself sometimes just want to have fair be fair a little social justice as it were <laughs> you know okay so now now no more referee talk all right. Ha! Just kidding. Here we go. Movement in the backfield. Alvarez takes a snap. Gets out of the way of one. Throws across his body. Intercepted at the 49 up to the 50 to the 49-45. Still on his feet. Angling back. A turnover to start things off. Mr. Ridge. Huge. Number 26. That's Mark Lerma. The linebacker with the pick. Yeah, he just didn't see him. Just didn't see him and he snuck up. And, you know, we talked about those uh, across, you know, throwing across your, your your body into the middle of the field. Those are just tough throws to make. you gotta, you got to really put a lot of zip on them. Great read by linebacker and a fantastic opportunity for Vista. First and 10 for the Rangers up at the 40. you got to move the chains, y'all. What's going on? Now they got there. Snap. Harrell looking to throw. Now he's going to step up in the pocket. Spins out of one tackle. He's riding the defender. He'll get no gain. And he gets something out of uh, <laughs> nothing out of nothing? I yeah. It, what do you say about that? Well, he saw he saw some green. And he's like, hey. And that green closed up into some blue pretty quick. Second and ten from the 42. I get a second and nine from the 41, I beg your pardon. Harrell looking to throw, has a receiver going down on the far side. Brosey incomplete. Brosey the intended receiver. Up to the line quick for his third down. Third and nine now for the Rangers at the 41. Long look to the sideline. Play clock down to 25. Starting from 40, now down to 20. Two receivers to the far side, two receivers to the near side. One back in the backfield. Now redirection, now coming out wide. They're coming in motion. Harrell looking to throw. Tipped in the air, it's caught. Spinning out of one play and making it up across the 40 down to the 39 asking for a face mask on that one is Murray no call and it'll be fourth down up at the 39 yard line looks like they might go for it well the defense is playing so well that you might be tempted to do this I think pinning them deep with the troubles they're having on offense is probably the way to go but trips to the far side play clock down to 18 long look over to the sideline and like you said, Trey, the first half, they're taking their time, not going, getting up to the line of scrimmage, but they're taking their time getting set. Down to five seconds. Garcia going to motion out of the backfield. Harold rolling to his right, looking to throw downfield. Throws across the body, ball caught up at the 30-yard line. First down for the Rangers. What a great catch. He had multiple people that he could have tried, he could have thrown that to. Gain a nine and a first down for the Rangers. That was Tian Murray once again. They Murray. really have Clemens on, Clemens on their heels here. 
Trips to the near side. One receiver to the top of the screen. Harper on the backfield. Harold stepping up. And he's going to be dropped on the coverage sack. Good pressure yeah. coming up by the Clemens Buffaloes. Yeah, blitz from the left side there. They brought more people than they had on the right to block them. Lots and of that, five on that. Right, and that play was designed to roll left. So the linemen were actually getting up and moving left too. So Second and 15 handoff. Harper on the near side tries to bounce up across the 35. He'll gain one yard to the 34. It's second down, or sorry, third down and 14. Another third long for the Vista Ridge Rangers. I think another cross up the middle. They're having a lot of success in the middle. Snap, Harold trips to the far yep. side. Yep. Looking to throw. Now he'll cut back. Has some room to run. Fakes the throw. Steps up across the 30. Not going to get much more than that. It'll be fourth down up at the... See where they spot it. I believe it's going to be at the 27-yard line. Be about fourth and eight. I was yelling, yep, which is secret code for there's a guy open in the middle. But he was getting pressure, so he needed to make a decision, and he's been... He's been pretty spot on with his decision making tonight. Another big so play opportunity for the Rangers. Sorry, Trey. I mean, no, that, this is now, this is fourth and really long. And the yeah, they're going to call a timeout time here. by the Clements Buffaloes is the. Oh. Well, that's a gift. Yes, it is. Oh, no, they're giving it to Vista. I thought I yeah. saw. The coach near side here, he was had his hands above his head. Looked like he was calling timeout as well, but it's timeout for the Rangers. Fourth down and eight coming up here. Another fourth down opportunity. They converted on their last one on this drive. And uh, with 8.05 to go, a nice opening drive after the interception for the Rangers here in the third quarter. Well, I really do think that that middle is open. Um, Clemens has, had, has struggled in the middle there they're mm -hmm. you know playing that zone or they're getting a guy up on the slot that's playing man to man really tight and we've got those stacked wide receivers and they're just able to break out of that kind of sad the drums have stopped mm -hmm. that was a pretty good stuff right there from the clemens band it was did a pretty good job for not having the time to go out on the field you know gave us a nice little show there and you can hear in the distance, that's Vista Ridge's band. That is. I'll give a little shout out over there. I'll show them. A little Sweet Caroline going there on. There they are. Trips to the far side for the Rangers. Fourth down and eight here from the 28-yard line. If you're good at math, that means they need to get to the 20. Harold takes a snap. Drops straight back, looking to throw. Now flushed out to his right. Throw it across his body and a flag coming in. Might be a, is that a, a holding penalty? I know he got whacked pretty hard. Yep, hold. holding on the offense. It'll be declined. It'll be turnover on downs. So first down and ten for Clemens at the twenty-eight. Yeah, Seven. Clemens is doing something. They've gotten pressure now up the. They've gotten pressure coming off the left side now. Multiple plays in a row making Harrell have to be quicker than he wants to be. Not, you know, and he's not able to use those feet to give his receivers time. The Vista, the Vista defense has really stepped up all night. Here's another chance for them to do that. From the 28, Alvarez, low snap, ball on the ground. He's gonna get knocked backwards. Oh my goodness. Sorry, the referee was getting in the face of one of the Rangers, telling him to calm down. Clemens, Clemens playing with their yellow feet. Yes. This is causing me all kinds of problems. It does. Since we've seen so many flags tonight, I get confused. 
That's a loss, a big loss right there, all the way back yeah. to the 20, looks like three-yard line, loss of five on the plate. Snap, Alvarez, quick throw, actually tipped in the air, incomplete. That's a different quarterback, I believe that's number eight. Yep, that is, that was... Uh, Boy, that had me confused. Well done, Michael. Brandon Wright, yeah, the halfback tight end, the direct snap, quick throw, ball tipped in the air, knocked to the ground, third in the country mile. Chuck Licata would not like me saying that, but I I don't really. Why not? It just doesn't like that phrase. Uh, he got after me quite a bit. But the Iceman, Chuck the Iceman Licata, gave me my start in this uh, industry. So likewise. Love the man dearly. First time I met him, he was wearing a Minnesota Wild hat Oof. in Texas. I couldn't believe it. I knew I was home. Third and long for the Clemens Buffaloes. Alvarez takes a snap. Flushed out of the pocket on his feet. Still going far side, 25 up to the 30. Lowers his shoulder. Gets up across the 30, close to the 35, but not enough for a first down. It'll be fourth down and about five, maybe four. And a late flag coming in. And why not, right? Why not? Why not? An injured player down on the far side as well. Da, 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 da. See, I sang for you. Thank you. I, that's sure, I have I have not seen a call yet. I'm waiting for the white-handed gentleman to tell us what's going on. Meeting with his crew over there at the 30-yard line. Yep. Now, the Clemens quarterback there. Feeling that pressure that's been there all night, choosing the run pretty quick. Gave up on the, gave up on the drop back pretty fast there. Here we go with the call. No. No. Psych. Psych again. Oh, it's going to be a holding against against Clemens. See if they, yeah, they're gonna push him back. A sportsmanlike conduct against the Rangers. A dead ball foul that turns into a first down when they have a penalty against them. That's confusing to me. No, uh, the announcer's about to say after the penalty they get a first down. That's not true. Uh, I well, don't know it why. Is, it is because they knocked them back, and then uh, now it's, it's first down and ten from the thirty, which is a ginormous pile of poop. Ah, <laughs> I am so sorry, but there you go. Well, that's what I'm saying I, is that the penalty should have pushed them back further than ten yards. It shouldn't have been a first down. I'm not. I'm not sure. Why it wasn't a personal foul. It was a dead ball foul. Quick throw to the near side, caught up across the 40, up to the 42, and that's a quick pitch and catch and a first down for the Buffaloes. Wow. Well I can't even look down to right on my piece of paper and they're right back at it. Well they might have found something there with an out to the We'll see here. I was chanting Dorm Dormeyer on the reception. That floor. was the that was the most open of wide receivers been in a while. Mm -hmm. Two backs in the backfield. Snapped Alvarez rolling to the near side, looking to throw. A little dump pass. Ooh. Oh boy. Be careful with that. And then a flag comes in late. Oh boy. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Against everybody. Against. Oh, it's against Clemens. Against Clemens. One of the Vista Ridge Rangers players was thrown to the ground after the play was thrown incomplete out of bounds. Yep. So that'll push him back. Give us a second and 20. Yep, Since yep. it's a dead ball foul.
Well, that's a lot further than 10 yards. Goodness. All right. So back from we'll the take 40, them. 42 back to the 27 yard. Not sure line. I've ever seen a spot foul that on a uh, unsportsmanlike conduct, but first and 30 now. 30. Yep. Okay. Trips to the far side. Alvarez rolling to his far side. Throws off his back foot in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Yeah, they've started rolling him out um, to try to deal with that pressure that he's been getting. And something that I'm seeing that uh, the Rangers defense is doing really well is every hat on hat is physical. Right? They're not trying to just shed players, right? It, very physical mm -hmm. and you know we have another penalty we do or no yep yep some, to, brought, brought back to the 22 yard line some sort of penalty <laughs> coaches next door for Vista Ridge unhappy about something I would imagine they're saying don't accept it, but you know, what's confusion? Now they're going to respot it because they're not going to accept it. Which is exactly, I don't even think they asked them. So there was a illegal man downfield. Brings up third down and long from the 25. There's yeah. CB 27. I mean, if they've got a 30-yard play in them, more kudos, you know, kudos to them. So I agree definitely with not taking the penalty here. Snap, Alvarez dropping straight back, looking to throw his pressure, yeah. and he's going to be brought down. Nice. Yeah, they pin their ears back right there because they needed, they needed a big play, and so they needed time to set that up. And they were shooting somebody, they were shooting somebody up to try to do a post. That was beautiful. And there was just no way he was going to have time to get open. Which, you know, you can do that if you have the athletes to play this man-to-man -man that they do. You know, because then you have the extra guys that you can send. Fourth down and 37 from the 15. A loss of 12 on that play. Punt by Turner. End over end coming oh. up to make the fair catch. Is Tanner Brosi, and he does successfully all the way up. <laughs> it's been a, it's been an adventure every time on a punt, hasn't it? It has up at the 42-yard line. Holy cats! 5:39 to go here in the third quarter. 14 to 13 is the score. Michael Rose here, along with Trey Grubb. Hello. <laughs> and Christina Weber, our our QA back at Vipe Live. All kinds of shenanigans going on here, folks. My heavens. The calamity, Trey. Goodness gracious, I have five texts, Miss my queen. First and ten from the 42. Handoff right up the middle. Being thrown forward up across yeah. the 35. And didn't get the yards. Come on, man. To get them. Ball marked at the 35. It'll be second down in about three or four. Should, it, like four. should get where you end up after being thrown. Up to Snap. the ball quick. Yes. Harper gets the handoff. Yes. Gets pulled forward all the way up to the 30-yard line. A gain of five on the carry. First down and 10 for the Rangers at the 30-yard line. Harper with a rush of five right there. Two receivers to the bottom of the screen. One to the top. One back in the backfield. Handoff. Bouncing to the outside is Harper. Gets thrown backwards. But a good little run, gain of a yard, gets up across the 30 to the 29, second and nine for the Rangers. Everything okay from your queen? Our queen, the queen? It's just letting us know that the, the refs have probably had enough. <laughs> so Two second and long. Harold with the fakes the handoff, rolling out. 
Throws across his body, caught up at the 25. Wow. Makes one player miss up across the 20, down inside the 20, close to the 15, marked out of bounds. What a throw the by Carroll. That was, that was something else. That was impressive. Quickly to the ball. Ball up at the 17-yard line. First and 10 for the Rangers. Gain of 12. And you're right, Trey. Something out of nothing. Handoff bounces to the outside. Looks to be Harper. I can't quite see after the pile there. And she said she laughed very hard when you said pile of poop. Uh-huh. Good. Because I calls them as I sees them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Second down and nine here. Ball at the 16-yard line. Handoff. Pushing the pile. A gain of another yard up to the 15. Now third down and seven. Yeah, I mean, if you could... Or eight. If you could really start to be able to run the ball here and really chew some time off here and in the fourth quarter in a very close game. Three and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. And we've got the Rangers driving, Michael. Play clock down to 15 seconds. Game clock down to 315. Trips to the near side. Thank you, Trey. Nice spot right there. Snap. Harold dropping straight back, looking to throw. Has a little bubble screen. Caught up at the 15 to the 10. Angling out of bounds. Close to a first down. Looked to be Harper coming out of the backfield. I think that's who it was. Once again, a fantastic play call. Just perfect. Next says that was Sizikowski on the catch out of the backfield. Little bubble screen there, angling to the far side. First and goal for the Rangers. Ball at the seven yard line. And taking advantage of that aggressive defense and looking in the middle to try to make something happen. As you can see, ball on the far hash. Runner going in motion. That's Heppelfinger to the far side. Bouncing to the outside. Looks to be Harper. Maybe wow, yes, sir. pushing the pile. Yes, Touchdown, sir. Rangers. Look at that, Trey. Offensive line. Mauling. Big boys up front. Getting their done. That's number 26. That's Mark Lerma. Linebacker. Playing running back right there. Touchdown Rangers. Out for the extra points. Cornwell. Snap spot kick on the way. It is good. 21-13 with 2.58, 2.58 left to go in the third quarter. Rangers extend their lead to eight. Wow. Well, you know, and what they're playing pretty much, they're definitely more efficient on offense and the defense has raised the level again uh, you know game to game but the difference here is in this second half is the amount of mistakes mm -hmm. and the penalties you know we've we've made jest of that but it really has been kind of both on both ends yeah it's just been kind of you know uh questionable at times <laughs> but it's been both ways so they've yes, been consistently absolutely. weird yes which is good Thankfully, yes, you are absolutely right. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so the last couple kickoffs have been pretty profitable on the return, but negated by penalties for Clemens. And the tee, or excuse me, ball gets blown off the tee before Cornwell can put his foot into it. So we'll re reset and retry once again. Back deep for the... Buffalo's number one, Cameron Owens, along with yeah, they've been far side, caught at the 15, making his way to the 20, still on his feet, trying to angle and then knock backwards as he gets up close to the 20. That's where they'll mark him. First and 10 for Clemens Buffalo's. You know, so you you know you know how I feel about pooch kicks. But uh -huh. that kind of, they've been doing that all night where it's, it's not quite kicking it as deep as you can, but it's not a pooch kick where they're kicking it up around the 30-yard line or so. 
they're kicking it into the one of the corners, right? Right, and that takes away half the field. Mm -hmm. So really great job, special teams tonight. For um, you know to win, you got to have all three do great. And special teams has been really good tonight for the Rangers. Two backs in the backfield. Alvarez takes a snap, fakes, or actually does make the handoff. I beg your pardon. From the 20, ball pushes the pile up across the 25 to the 26. A nice initial push right there for the Clemens Buffaloes. That's yeah, yeah. Be Bebley on the carry. Bebley's a big dude. Looks kind of like the guy that uh, was working tonight where we had, or working today where we had lunch. That's right. Big tall guy. Tall drink of water. Second and five from the 26. Alvarez handoff coming near size. Bebley lowers his shoulder, gets across the 26. Close to the 27. Might be no gain. We'll see where they put their feet. Looks like it's going to be right between the 26 and 27 yard line. Yeah, that was our player of the week last week. Shedding off a block and making the play. Cruz! Just in case that wasn't <laughs> clear. It was not a boo. It was a Cruz. Yes. Aiden Cruz on the play. Two receivers near side, one at the top of the screen, and up back, and a bad snap, ball on the ground. Who's going to get there? Wow. Looks like the running back was that, able to fall on top of it. That ball bounced up in the air. He landed on his back, and it just dropped down into his tummy. That's what it looked like to me. And Ted Bebley able to come up with the recovery, but the ball, a loss of six, back to the original line of scrimmage, and it'll be fourth down and ten, and the punting unit comes out four. The Buffaloes back deep to receive the punt. Number three, Tanner Brosi. I can't remember the last time they got a first down on a play. On an offensive play. Turner's nice ball right here, angling high. Brosi makes the fair catch at the Vista Ridge 45. First and 10 for the Rangers. With Two in a row, Rangers. baby. Here we go. Keep Two that. in a row. Great catches by the punt returner. We're inside a minute at 55. Zero seconds to go here in the third quarter. Vista Ridge football. And they have the lead 21 to 13, y'all. How about them apples? Offense coming back out onto the field now. Jackson Harrell, a quarterback. Trips coming to the near side. Uh, so it must have been a penalty. Oh. I was unaware of. Well, I don't know what the deal is. Ten yard or so. What? Not sure. All right. That's on me for not paying attention. Me, me there. too. I want no. I was I was sign languaging you four letters that I was we go. questioning about. Harold picks the hand off, rolls one way, now doubles back the other. In trouble, but scrambles out of the way. He's going to get hit and knocked. Goodness. Violently out of bounds. What a great job. What, what a great job to be able to get out of the pocket and change direction and almost get back to the line of well, did he get right back? He got back to the line of scrimmage? He actually looks like he's lost two yards on the carry. Just a, a great athletic play. It's a ginormous frustration right there second and 12 for the rangers two receivers near side harold plenty of time steps up throws as hits as he's throw and garcia makes the reception coming to the near side gets all the way up to the 45 yard line that's just exactly what yes. they need for a first down wow and they're they're either going to give it to them or they're gonna yep they're gonna give it to them garcia did a great job and yep. great patience by harold harold was Harold did, as he threw. Well, Harold also looked him off. He did a really good job of looking to the right, looking to the right, looking in the middle, and then going where he knew he was ready to go. Gave his wide receiver a lot of opportunity there, or running back. Hand up right up the middle. Garcia lowers his shoulder, gets up across the 45. Gain of about three. Looks like they'll spot him up at the 48-yard line. Yeah, it's always good. You tackled it at the two and you get another yard. That's the way to go. 
Make that two yards at the 47. So second down and seven. And we're going to let the play yep. clock, our game clock go to Throw zero. the four fingers up. Throw them up. Four quarter, fourth quarter coming our way. 21-13 is the score at the end of three. The Rangers have an eight-point lead, and it's been, a, it's been fun, man. It's been a lot of fun. A nice job by the Rangers. They'll have a second down coming up. Let's we'll switch uh, sides of the field here. Fourth quarter coming up. It's been a, a long evening, but, uh, man, the uh, Rangers have come up big right here for for each other and for the coaches and for us fans as well. It's been a lot of fun. And I tried not to have anyone hear me drink water, but it just, I didn't yeah, I should have been me, talking to help you out there. Everyone just heard me drink water. So I was talking for that. I was talking to my queen. Everything okay back at headquarters? Everything's great. All the other games are probably coming to a <laughs> close. <laughs> Wrapping things up. We appreciate Christina sticking with us tonight. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, it's really good to have her back with us. So we appreciate her sticking it out. So, second down for the Rangers. The fourth quarter about to begin here at the snap. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Harold hands it off. Trying to get going and... Yeah, to no avail. A loss of yeah, about three the weak, on the carry. weak side block there was definitely missed. Ran free, which is most assuredly not the design of the play. So my guess there would be a missed assignment. Third down and nine for Vista Ridge. Man in motion to the right. Uh, Miscue yeah. out there. Harold ran into his running back, Garcia, and he's knocked backwards for a giant loss. All the way back. Looks to be the 35-yard line. Oh, my gosh. And Garcia ran off quickly there. Very fast. A very costly miscue, but it's clock continued to run here down inside. Well, the last time we had a punt... Went quite the distance. See if he can get it over his head. Punt received at the 30. Makes a move up to the 35. Runs into a host of Rangers. They're going to tackle him all the way back to the 25 as the pile gets pushed. That's number three, Jameer Dudley on the return. First and ten for the Clemens Buffaloes up at the 35-yard line. Looks like we might have an injured player on the on the field. Yeah, that uh, the snap was a little high and to his right, so probably felt a little um, needed to rush that punt a little bit. Really didn't get his leg into it, uh, I'm sure, as he wanted. Christina says she's with us to the bitter end. Sweet. Ten minutes, 30 seconds left here in the fourth quarter. Still a one-score game, so obviously the game for anybody to take here. Vista has definitely dominated in my opinion has dominated the game just hasn't been able to capitalize on some of the opportunities they've had but defense has played really well special teams really well that's always good that's Mark young Lerma man get up injured player who uh, hops back up
comes back to get his mouth guard before he goes back off the field. First and 10 so, for yeah. the Clemens Buffaloes at the 35 with 10.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. So you can hear the Clemens faithful that are here that have fought, you know, sat through the rain. Well, they didn't sit, sit in the rain, but still here. And you can hear them kind of trying to get their boys a little motivated because this is a big, big drive. Bunch formation, two receivers each side, a runner coming in motion from the far side. Flip pass avoids one would-be tackler, but it'll be no gain as he's knocked down at the 35-yard line. A little trickeration to no avail for the Buffaloes. Well, the play was blown up. Trying to see who that was. Uh, the play was blown up by Grant Anderson getting in there so fast that he really, the running back really had to bounce that out further than he maybe wanted to. Second and 10 for the Buffalo is at the 35 yard line. Two receivers to the top of the screen. Back going in motion. Snap, Alvarez dropping straight back, looking to throw off his back foot. Has a receiver going downfield. Spins him around one way and then back the other. Incomplete, third down and 10. Pretty decent coverage, step stride for stride down the field. Yeah, and he just, he didn't have the time to really let that develop. Alvarez going for all the Tostitos on that one. My favorite broadcast line of all time. Who gave that? Brent Musburger in the Tostito ah. Fiesta Bowl. Two receivers to the far side, one to the near side in bunch formation, one back in the backfield. Alvarez has a receiver coming in motion to the near side. Handoff right up the middle. Evades one tackler, pulls the pile all the way up across the 40, up to the 40, 44, or excuse me, 43 yard line. I yeah, big your decision to make here. Fourth and two now for. They're sending out the punt unit. Not sure I'd trust that 100%. Turner to punt it. Looks like is that fourth down, number one, that's Cyan Allen back deep. He's gonna let it take there a bounce. Go. It's gonna roll inside the ten. And a great punt for, for Turner and the Buffaloes. Pins the Rangers deep in their own territory. First and ten for the Rangers at the nine yard line. Yeah, really but smart. Smart decision because uh, that punt definitely wasn't prepared for it to go that deep. And instead of trying to trying to make a catch on the run, running to his right, he just let it bounce. I'd much prefer that because this drive here will take another, if they get some first downs, take another, you know, five minutes off the clock. First and 10 for the Rangers. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top of the screen. Heffelfinger going in motion to the far side. Snap, Harrell. Harrell hands it off. Trying to bounce to the outside and no going right there. Yeah, they they no struggle game. with that play today. Yeah, they do. They just haven't been able to get a whole lot running on the left side. The good news is there is it wasn't blown up or uh, no miscues in the backfield that time, but uh, no gain on the play. Sizikowski in the backfield behind Harrell, lined up in the I formation. Two receivers to the near side, one to the top of the screen. Harrell takes the snap, takes the handoff, quick throw to the far side, caught up at the 20, leans forward. It should be enough for a first down, and it's up across the 20. Great catch. Great catch indeed, and it's a first and 10 for the Rangers up to the 20-yard line. Just on the other side of it, gain of 11. You know, it's always interesting for a team that plays quickly when you're trying to get time off the clock mm -hmm. do you stick with you know how you normally play hand off right up the middle pushing the pile nice run right there on the first down up across the 25 to the 27 yard line a gain of seven but you know what i mean you mm -hmm. want to try to take clock time right but you know your your mo is to play quickly no reason to take the foot off the gas, I guess is the best way to put it. 
Snap, Harrell, handoff right up the gut once again, runs into a wall of defenders. Maybe a yard on the carry if that. Well, it's really easy for me because I'm way up here. <laughs> if he'd have bounced to the right, that would have been pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Third down and three now for Mr. Ridge. Yeah, this is an important first down here. As they all are, but this is a this is a big one. Get another set of downs. Sizikowski and Joey Pryor are the backs in the backfield. Play clock all the way down to ten. This got to be a timeout. Trying to milk as much clock as they can right Goodness, here. Goodness, has to be a timeout. Yep, there it is. Timeout taken by Vista Ridge. That's their second of the half, so one remaining with 6.47 to go. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We should have a, a coach near, next door come in and tell us what that was all about. Mm. <laughs> so 6.47 to go here in the ball game. Vista Ridge on top, 21-13. What a game it's been, folks. We've got to go through an hour-long weather delay, and it was 10-0 at that point. And Vista Ridge came back right at the, their first series right after the rain delay and scored their first touchdown. And uh, then another one before the half ended. They are up 14-13 at the half. Now we find ourselves with 6.47 to go in the game. They lead 21-13. It's been a lot of fun, as I mentioned, as the fourth quarter started. It's... Uh, this is one that we'll, uh, we'll remember for a while. Yeah. And cherry on top would be a victory. It sure would. Absolutely would. Timeout was called by Vista Ridge. They have one timeout remaining. Michael Rose here along with Trey Grubb up here in the press box. This broadcast brought to you by our friends and partners with the Vista Ridge Booster Club. We thank you for... Thank you. For, yeah, thank you for all you do for all of us to make this broadcast possible. Let's go. Third and three for the Rangers. Two receivers to the near side, to the top of the screen. Harold takes a snap, drops straight back. Quick throw, far side. Has a player in motion. Great did catch. he catch that? Yes, yes he, he did. did. Great catch. Wow. Up across the 20, or excuse me, to the 30, to the 34-yard line. First and 10 Rangers. That was some serious zip on that throw. Gain of six. That was great hands right there as he caught it above his head and yep. able to hang on to it as he was knocked out of bounds. Dang, that was nice. Yep, got us another set of downs here. Come on, crowd. It's here you. Nope. <laughs> Never mind. Two receivers near side to the top of the screen. Harold picks the handoff, thrown down the far sideline. As the receiver, is it caught? Is it caught? He caught it. Is he, he in bounds? Looks to be in bounds. Wow. Just another great pass by Harold. Only his guy is going to be able to catch that. I didn't see who caught it, but that was a sweet catch all the way up to the 31-yard line. First and 10 Rangers into Buffalo territory. Wow. Ah, and he got interfered with, no less. Very nice. Yeah. Usually I'm able to be Michael's good spotter. All the different things we're doing here, making that a little tough. Sorry about that, Michael. That's all right. Gain of 33 on the play. Handoff. Yeah. Bounce into the near side. Gets maybe a yard. A little Looks bit. Of, you saw that a little hesitation, right? He was trying to see mm -hmm. where the hole might. Yeah. It goes fast. you got to make some decisions very quickly. But. Running time off the clock. They can get at least three points. This turns this into a two-score game. Big time. Second and ten from the 31-yard line. That was a 35-yard play. I should, I should have said, not 33. 35-yard pitch and catch. Heffel finger in motion. Harold with the handoff right up the gut. Again, met. As he gets close to the line of scrimmage, he'll be knocked backwards. He'll be third and 11. Yeah, number 99, Russell 
How do you say that last name there? Yalakowski. Just going to give a little bit of love to him. He's he Sorry, Yalowski. My bad. Sorry. He has been in the backfield. He has been trouble. He's been a he's been a bright spot for Clemens tonight. Snap Harrell. Takes the handoff. Rolling back to the near side. Is in trouble. Throws across his body. Nobody there. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down and 11. It's all right. Threw it exactly where nobody was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> uh, no reason to risk that. Only trouble there was he, he rolled into the defense. So what do you do here? It's too, probably too far for a field goal, right? I think it is, yeah. Game clock down to 4.58, so it took just, I, just over three minutes off of the... Is there a reason Almost you don't four. punt it toward the corner? Yes, they're you might get 10 yards. You're going for it. A little pooch punt right here. A little nice. Squibber. Put it in the... Oh, it's going to oh. take a bounce. Get out of the end zone. Oh. Did he get it? Did he stop it? He did. He stopped it on the one. Are you oh kidding Oh, my me? gosh. What a great effort. Oh, my gosh. And so now the moth is in the way. <laughs> That's my hand, ladies and gentlemen, trying to get this moth to move. Oh, my goodness. What a play. Could not have asked for better. Tion Murray went all the way down to the goal line and knocked it back to the one to save it from a touchback. What a great hustle. He's been all over the place tonight. Has a couple touchdowns and just made some tremendous plays all evening long. And that one has to be right up there. First and 10 for the Clemens Buffaloes with 4.49 to go from their own one yard line. They got to go 99 yards. It is a one score game though. Although they would have to get a two point conversion. They would, absolutely. 4.49 to go here in the game. Offensive lineman running onto the field, running a little late. 10 seconds on the play clock in your own end zone. And passing, Alvarez goodness. passing out of the end zone. Interception. And it's picked off <laughs> at the 25. Four of them takes it back to the 30. Now up to the 20, 15, 10. Angles to this far side. Still on his feet. Pushes the pile. Touchdown, Touchdown. Rangers. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that was something else. He caught that like a wide receiver. That's number one. That's Zion Allen. It's the corner, junior cornerback, made that pick up at the 25. Forward momentum took him up to the 30. He angled all the way back and scored a touchdown with 432. Extra point on the way. It is good. 28 to 13 with 432 to go. And the Vista Ridge Rangers just broke the heart of the Clemens Buffaloes. Yeah, what an interesting call to run a pass play. And from a defensive perspective, they're probably thinking run. Mm -hmm. Right? They're deep in their deep in their uh, end zone. But what great defense to stay with your guy. Don't, don't get fooled into thinking that it's going to be a run. Stay with your guy. Man-to-man. -man. We've talked about that before, how good they are in their man-to-man -man coverage. And he was. it was almost like the pass was intended for him. Right. Just a great catch with the ball out in front of him. Right? Wasn't a, wasn't a bad throw. No. Just great defense. A great defense right there on the inside shoulder. And just cut up in front of him, took that ball away, literally, figuratively, and it's nice, nice run back, staying in bounds, following blockers, angling back, went to the sideline, then cut it right back at the corner and got pushed into the end zone, and it's 28 to 13. Yeah, those defensive linemen, it was almost like uh, an offensive line pushing, pushing their guys in, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you know, we've been talking about the games have been, they haven't been close, but the team has been playing really well. You could hear the excitement from the coaching staff next to us over here because they've just been waiting, right? It's, it's, it's right there. 
and they've been playing really, really well. And, you know, some people might think that the rain delay, all that kind of stuff, I think they were playing well prior to that. A little pooch kick. Clarence De Perrine with the kick. Muffed and picked up finally at the 20-yard line. That's the reason they do those that pooch kicks. That is exactly right, because it's a free ball after 10, and they weren't able to get on it until the last second, and they get knocked down. A flag on the play back at the 27-yard line. This moth... Loves us. Will not go away. <laughs> and just just so you know, Mr. Moth or Mrs. Moth, you're not in focus. <laughs> you're a little blob. <laughs> that is precious. Penalty against the Buffaloes pushes them back to the 11. Oh, great. Now the moth is in the middle of the camera. <laughs> of course he is. Way to go. That's precious. My precious. <laughs> Oopsies. All right. Four and a half minutes left. 15 point lead. Two score game. You definitely know that they have to throw the ball. They do. Two receivers to each side for the Buffaloes. Alvarez. Wait. I don't think that's Alvarez. Who's the quarterback? Number nine. Rolling to the. Far side, still on his feet, gets forced out of bounds, gets up across the 10, gain of about maybe a yard or, yep, one yard on that. And that's number nine, Matthew Hale, back at quarterback, junior for Clements, up to the 12, second down and nine. Yeah, Christina says, give the moth a break. It's a fan, <laughs> a football fan. Right on. Trips to the near side for the Buffaloes. Matthew Hale, the quarterback. Running back next to him. Steps up out of the pocket. Now he's going to take off running up to the 15 angles. Close gets tackled from behind as he gets up to the 20-yard line. They'll give him four progress to the 21. So first down for the, the Buffaloes at the 21. Gain of nine on the scamper for the quarterback, Hale. Yeah, and with the score where it's at and knowing what they have to do, you really only have to have four guys rushing. And if you can get pressure with four guys, which they are, the, the Rangers have been able to do that, puts an immense amount of pressure on the offense. Hale hand off to Bebley. Bebley bounces outside. Tell you what. tackled as he tries to get the edge. Nice contain right there by the defense of yeah. Vista Ridge. You know, something that, and we have somebody down on the floor there, or on the I always hate to see that, but mm -hmm. um, something that I've also I've noticed in this game, and there wasn't a whole lot of it in the previous two games, but missed tackles, I, I mean, I'm not sure I can remember one really bad missed tackle in this game. You know, there's been some blown assignments or some, you know, uh, not been able to make that initial, but definitely... Um, their tackling's been pretty superb tonight. Yeah, definitely has. Both units, well, actually all three units, special teams, defense, offense, they have all improved every game. And in this game, improved, you know, pre-rain, after rain. So within the game. And that's another thing we've talked about. The coaching staff has done a really good job at halftime of making some adjustments. Injured Buffalo down on the field being tended to, so try and maybe take one more Kevin McAdams break. Oh, sure. Is that okay? Yeah. We'll let the training staff. You're the boss. Over. We'll take one more quick break. This is Vista Ridge football right here on Vipe Live. We'll be back after this injury timeout. Campus brings our popular citywide media days right to your doorstep. As a Vibe Campus client, we will work with you to help you take advantage of our unique campus model to build a unique experience for your school. 
From media day photo shoots of all your athletes to game day coverage, broadcasts and live streams, video and digital content, hype videos, the Vipe U program, same day graphics, and of course your very own campus magazine, Vipe Campus is truly whatever you want it to be. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out how to join Vipe Campus today. Hey, high schoolers, are you interested in a career in sports media? Vipe can help. Launched in 2017, our Vipe U Ambassador Program is a one-of-a-kind educational scholarship program that offers high school students a chance to gain hands-on experience in the sports media field. Vipe U also gives students a platform to build their portfolio of creative work under the guidance of Vipe's seasoned professionals. From covering games to publishing photos, writing articles, and conducting on-camera interviews, each Vipe U ambassador receives an immersive experience geared toward their interests while promoting their own school and preparing them for their future. Email info at vipemedia.com to find out more about Vipe U today. Welcome back to Lenhoff Stadium here in Church, Texas. Michael Rose along with Trey Grubb. The fullback, Clarence Woods, the injured player, gets up and walks off under his own power. Second and nine for the Buffaloes at the 22-yard line. Matthew Hale, backup quarterback, in for this drive. Takes a snap, looking to throw near side. A little push off there, incomplete as it goes over the head of everybody else. There's a flag on the field, and uh, I think he's going to call interference on. Um, he's going to call interference on a ranger. I think it happened before we saw the pushing from the offensive wide receiver. Yeah, it was a little, little give and go right there. So I, I, I saw one side. I'm glad you saw the other. First and ten. For the Buffaloes on that 15-yarder, up to the 37-yard line. So three minutes, 32 seconds left in the game. Just got to make them earn every yard. Take time off that clock. Two backs in the backfield. 28 to 13 is the score. Hale steps out of the pocket, throws downfield, has a receiver. Oh, in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Almost. Good patience, good ball right there. Just a tough break as it sails out of his hands incomplete. Well, and good coverage. Good coverage. Absolutely, Which yeah. makes it, you know, we've talked about that. Just putting pressure on the player to have to make a play, right? To have to make a tough catch. If you're not playing really good coverage there, then that's, an, you know, an easy, even though the throw's off, he can make an adjustment and get to it, right? Since you're playing good coverage, it makes it a hard catch. Two receivers to each side. Hale takes the snap, drops straight back, now rolling near side. Pulls it down, throw across his body, has a receiver caught up across the 45, enough for a first down close to midfield. Yeah, but great coverage. That play took a lot longer than they would like when mm -hmm. they're trying to get two scores. Just great coverage downfield. It was only going to be something in the middle of what's going to be open. Luther Bebley, the running back, with the catch. 11 yards on the reception and a first down at the 48. Two receivers to each side for the Buffaloes. Three minutes to go in the game, folks. Three minutes, 28-13 the score. Hale steps back, throws downfield, has a receiver caught up across the 25, out of bounds. I think it's got at least one foot in for sure, and it's the first down. Yep for the Buffaloes all the way up to the 22 yard line. Wow. Yeah, kind of a, wasn't a back, back shoulder throw, just because it was thrown so high, but it had the same intent, or had the same result as a back shoulder throw. Right. Defenders playing deep, and the wide receiver is able to look up and come back to the ball. So the Rangers just uh, substituted almost their entire line just now. He did, and a whole bunch in and a whole bunch out. 30 yards on that pitch and catch. Hale rolling to the near side, steps up, now takes off running. Up across 25, 15, 10. Angles to the far side. Touchdown, Buffaloes. 2.43 to go. And they'll go for two, I'm sure. 22-yard scamper for the backup quarterback, Matthew Hale. Well, the, the book would say go for the field goal or go for the extra point because going for the extra point you know you got to get eight 
If you go for two now, it's for sure a two-score game. Mm -hmm. So I would be kicking an extra point here. So is that is that the quarterback that's been playing all night? Nope. Is that a, he's, yeah, he's the backup. So, he just came so in that's a different drive, yep. right, and that's always tough on the on the defense, right? You got somebody new, right, um, and obviously able to run. Yeah. So that's a new dynamic. So they are going to go for the two now. Trips to the near side. Hale steps up, throws up over a cross. Oh. The middle has a receiver wide open there as for a two-point conversion. Pretty great job right there of Good vision evading. Right there. Well, he evaded the the rusher and was able and that gave him just enough time to make the pass and give them a little bit of hope. Matthew Howard, the wide receiver, makes the catch. It's 28 to 21. Yeah, they're they're not going anywhere. So what do you do here, Michael? 243 left. If you kick it off to them, all they need to do is probably get, well, they've got three timeouts, so they probably need to get, what, two first downs? Mm -hmm. So do you kick it to them? Or do you, they're sure doing a big old meeting here as if they are not. With the way that the Rangers offense has kind of controlled the game. Yeah. I would think you're going to try an onside kick here. And the Rangers do have a timeout if they want to use it to be prepared for that. They got a lot of guys lined up. Ethan Brumgard, the here kicker. Here we go. He called it off. Oh. Angles Goodness. out of bounds. It's going to be a penalty. His, oh my gosh, I, he didn't see his uh, his special teams coach waved it off. Told him, don't do it, don't do it. He was telling him, no, 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 kick it deep. He was showing him, kick it deep, kick it deep. Because we didn't have a whole lot of guys deep. Yeah. And so if he'd have been able to, you know, do a little pooch kick there. Um, but yeah. the kicker didn't see it. And the best case scenario that could come out of that was for it to go out of bounds, so we didn't even have to try to field it. So, a couple of first downs here, and we got a bit, we're in the V formation. We definitely are. First and ten for the Rangers. Ball placed at the 41-yard line of Vista Ridge with 2:43 to go. This is this is what you want. I mean, you'd love for it to be an easy. But if it ain't easy, it makes you better. Two backs in the backfield. Harold sends Heffelfinger in motion from the near side to the far side. Snap. Hand off. Bounces to the outside. Hit as he gets up to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. They'll use their Second timeouts, I'm sure, here. Yep. Timeout. Clemens. I think you're going to have to throw the ball. I definitely think you're going to have to throw the ball. 2.37 to go in the game, and the Buffaloes call their first timeout. And I think you're right. Throwing the ball got, is going to well, be. Well, that middle has been open a lot. Mm -hmm. um, a screen. Uh, just something with some space involved in it. No reason to throw deep unless, you know, the first option is open, right? No reason to really throw deep because that could, that could kill the clock on an incompletion. But something over the middle... I mean, even if they even if they didn't get a first down, but they got it to the 49, let's say, or 48, a punt could put them inside the 10, where they've got to go 90 yards in two minutes. Yeah. Which they just went in less than that. But best case scenario is get yourself a first down. What a great atmosphere. Absolutely. One receiver top of the screen, two here to the bottom. Jackson Harrell, the quarterback, two backs in the backfield. Plenty of time on the play clock. 
Fire the fullback. A delayed handoff up the middle. Gets up across the 40 up to the 43. A gain of two. It's going to be third down and eight. Yep. Okay. So the Buffalo's calling another timeout. Clock stops at 2.29. So that would have been my pass play. Mm -hmm. Now I think you run the ball. I think you run the ball to make them have to call their final timeout. Yes. Because then they've got to go however far they've got to go with no timeouts. And hopefully the defensive, or I'm sure, the defensive coaches over there are all huddling and talking about how to handle this new quarterback. Yeah. What did they just see? A lot quicker? Feet moving a lot quicker? I would say you make them throw the ball, even though they had that long pass. He chunked it way up in the air. But a really, what a great atmosphere, though. Crowds lit up. Absolutely. Here come the Vista Ridge Rangers. Trips to the near side. Nobody on the far side. Two backs in the backfield. Jackson Harrell sends Heffelfinger in motion. Coming across now back the other way. Handoff and a hit as he gets close to the original line scrimmage. They'll gain a, a one more yard up to the 44. And they'll make them burn their final timeout with 2.23 to go. So now you got to get a good punt. Yep. And you don't punt it to them. You got it. You get that. This punt's got to go left or right, whatever whatever the punter feels best about, right? What they're most comfortable with. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can't give them a chance to run it back. I don't care if it goes out at the 20. You definitely don't want them to have the opportunity to run it back. Corner kick, you know, coffin kick would be great. Even to the even to the end zone, You're right? Touchback. Yep. Prefer not that because that definitely doesn't run any time off the clock. And the clock will start as soon as it touches his foot. I was just trying to look down at the sideline of, Buff of the Buffaloes to find where Nathan Alvarez, the starting quarterback, is. And I don't see him. So hopefully he's okay. Yeah. Bring in the house. High snap. Dusikek gets it away. Pushes him back deep. Fielded inside the 15. Coming to the near side up to 20. Gets the edge up to the 30. Still on his feet. Gets out of bounds. 2.12 to go in great field position. That's Dudley. Jameer Dudley, the punt returner. Senior free safety slash wide receiver. All right. So they've got to go... 65 yards in 2 minutes and 12 seconds. Ah! We have holding against Clemens, and so that will be a spot foul depending on where the holding was. So it looks like the holding was around what? what? Here we go. That's what was able to get Dudley such a good angle right there. And they're still walking it back from the 40 inside the 25, inside the 20 now, all the way back to the... Yep. Oh, oh goodness. From, from the 14, they're going to put the ball at the 7? So that means that it happened on the 17-yard line. That... That shouldn't be correct because then it would be half half the distance to the goal. So they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. Right now, the Rangers just they don't they don't need to be worried about where the ball's at. They've got their two safeties deep. Well no, that's right, because it's at the fourteen, so half the distance to the goal is the seven. Ah, wow. Yes. So that's and what it they happened did. right where he caught the ball. It did, yep. 
snap. Matthew Hale, the quarterback, rolling out. Still on his feet, pointing downfield. He's going to take off, running up across 10 for 15. Angles out of bounds. Stops the clock with 2.05. Yeah, his running has really changed, changed the dynamics of the game well, for the defense. 100%. Gain eight on that scamper. They'll give him the 16, so actually gain a nine. Two receivers to the near side for the Buffaloes. 2.05 to go as he stepped out of bounds to stop the clock. Matthew Hale, the quarterback, snap, drops back, looking, throw, steps up, rolling to his right, now coming back, avoids one tackle. Now still on his feet, avoids another, and he's going to be brought down for a loss, and the clock will keep running. And they don't have any timeouts to stop it. They got to get quickly back on the ball. They get knocked backwards inside yeah, the look, 10, but don't mark them at the 10. Yeah, look at our Rangers, though, hustling up to the line. A loss of six on that play. It's third down now and seven. Yeah, you can see he wants to run. Hale throws off the back foot, caught up to 15, knocked out of bounds, stops the clock. Up close and to the that'll, give him a first yard. that'll give him a first down, but he also got out, out of bounds. So that will stop the clock. Gain of 10 on that pitch and catch. Stops the clock with a minute and a half to go. And the moth is in the center. <laughs> the center of the screen. Just so you know, everybody, I cannot do anything about this moth. It is on the other side of like three-inch glass here. <laughs> Trey has talked to it. Pounded on it, scolded it. Matthew Hale takes a snap, roll it out. Oh, almost got the ball knocked out of his hands. Hits as he throws, going downfield. Ball knocked in the air. Did he catch it? It looks like he did. Oh, oh my across goodness. the 40 yard line. He had two guys on it. Clock stops with a minute 20, yes. That was Jameer Dudley coming up big right there. First so down for the Buffaloes. Point. Ball at the 37 yard line. Good Lord. Hey, great Friday night football. 47-yard pitch and catch right there all the way up to the 37 and timeout ah. call by the Vista Ridge Rangers. They lead 28 to 21 with a minute 10 to go. <laughs> You're right, Trey. Matthew Hale coming in in relief it, it's with his feet has changed this game in a big way. I mentioned way too early, evidently, that... Uh, um, Sion Allen on his interception pick six uh, broke yes. the hearts of the Buffaloes, but uh, well, it, Matthew Hale says otherwise. Well, it's also interesting. I mean, you know, we obviously want our Rangers to win. It's mm -hmm. always, you know, these are all young men, and it's just really, it's fun to see somebody who gets an opportunity and and make the most of it. When he was coming off the field just then, he he had to take a he had to take a knee and take a deep breath because. He he is, I would imagine, a bit tired. Yeah. And he's probably amped. Mm-hmm. His stomach is probably going in knots. And right there is Mr. Alvarez. Oh, there he is. Standing there all by himself with the... Yeah, I, I, I would imagine he would be in the game if he could. So... This is the young quarterback's opportunity to, to be doing. It's also a great opportunity for the Rangers. First and ten for the Buffaloes from the thirty there from the Ranger thirty-seven. Hale takes a snap, rolling to the near side, flushed out of the pocket, and he's there brought down go. from behind. Loss of a yard on the play. Good hustle by the Vista Ridge Ranger defense. Gets him under a minute. Gets him under a minute. They gotta get to the line quick. Hale with two receivers to each side. Takes a snap on the near hash. He's going to get pressure. Pressure up the middle. There we rolls go. around. He's going to fall down as he gets inside, all the way back inside the 45. You're under 30 back seconds to the 48. now. My goodness. Loss of 10 on that one. He's going to have Receiver finally got back on side. Quick throw. Out to the far side. Howard makes the catch, but he's Great knocked down. Job. Great open field tackle by the Rangers. This is it right here. 17, can get 15, lined up. 14. Tick, 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 tick. So tick, this tick, ball's going to go to the end zone for certain. This is going to the end zone. So Vista's got five guys deep. 
Hale steps up, avoids one sack, now the other. Steps up, still on his feet, and he's knocked down, and the ball game ends on a sack. The Buffaloes can't do anything. The pressure of the Ranger defense has been swarming all over them all night long, and at the right time it pays off, and the Vista Ridge Rangers get their first victory of the season. This one on the road here in Shirts, Texas. The final score, 28-21, to 21, and you are witnessing the midfield handshake, one of my favorite parts of high school football here in Texas. Yeah, he just didn't have time. You saw you saw him load up, right? A couple of times he loaded up to, to let it fly, and his guys weren't there yet, right? They weren't in the end zone yet, mm -hmm. and they needed to at least be within the 10-yard line, yeah. right, for him to let that go, and everybody was in the 10 and 20. They just weren't far enough yet, and our guys, man. Wow. They didn't get to come off the field, right? No, so, these, so these linemen that are throwing themselves around everywhere to get to him they haven't been able to get off the field because it's been you know fast as fast paced as it is mm -hmm. so they're exhausted mm -hmm. and you know one of the Big things time. about football that's just really wonderful is you there really are moments where you have to dig really deep yeah because you're exhausted you're right. mm -hmm. i mean and you know kudos to their quarterback their young quarterback um, he was exhausted, yeah. and he did everything he possibly could. But at the end of the game, his feet yes. did matter. Right. It needed his arm. Yes. And and to need his arm, he needed time. And our defensive line has been was beginning in there all night, and they just they did it again. Just would not stop. And just a fantastic win. Absolutely. Congratulations, guys. Yep. This, uh, over to the far side in the school song. Holy cats. Holy cats, indeed. Heading to the palace on Parmer next Friday night, you and I. Oh, the moth just has to get one shot in. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to take a picture of the whole team, Moth. Don't don't mind us. <laughs> I mean, my hope is it's not dead, but it sure has been still for a long it's, time. It's just it's giving us a little spirit. Well, it probably got really wet. Yeah. It's like, hey, this is a dry spot. <laughs> this is what I'm doing, and you're gonna like it. What a great game. What a fun game to call. It was yeah. worth the wait. Uh, congratulations. On the I got road myself too? a moth on oh, my side too, but <laughs> my moth's bigger than your moth. Uh, <laughs> what a great uh, atmosphere. Um, love the fact that the the fans stayed, mm -hmm. you know, yes. rooting their team on, even though we'd had, you know, thunderstorms and they were here to the very end and you know, who right. won the game for Vista? Defense. The defense. And they've been, you know, they've they've been playing really good all year. And the pressure that they put on the Clemens quarterbacks yes. was just uh, too much to overcome. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the victory, of course, is on the on the defense. But uh, that pick six by Allen put them up. Otherwise, we would have had ourselves a, t a tie game at this moment. I mean, yeah. So I mean, the, the defense just, is just how things went. The, the last defense couple has just been really, really good, um, yep. and they've played really good the last two games. Um, as you and I talked about, the score, the scores just really did not do justice. I mean, the score is the score. They gave up 41 points last week, but their defense didn't really play like right. they gave up 41 no. points. The mistakes put them in really short you yes. know field right kind of situations right yeah tonight short field turn situations became two became two field goals it's right it. yes those that are those are huge. four point plays that tackle over there oh my gosh that's, that's a four beautiful. point tackle yes it was right and he chased him down for 40 yards yes right that was that's so the kind of that's the kind of effort that you need from everybody, right? And when one person's doing that, right? 
um, that that bleeds. Oh, you, when huge. you see other guys doing that mm -hmm. effort, and you're sitting there on the line, and there's 15 seconds left, and you're exhausted. Yes. You're breathing hard. You almost feel like you need to throw up, and you just think about your. Uh, you think about the folks next to you. Yes, exactly. Right? You exactly. think about the other guys wow. around you. Yeah. And you're just like, okay, I have to, di I have to dig, mm -hmm. right? And so we get somebody who's flinging around, and he doesn't make the tackle, but he gets his arm on him, mm -hmm. so he can't load up, right? But he's able to get away from that. But then there's another guy that's coming right at him, mm -hmm. right? And he can't load up. Exactly. But he gets away from that guy, and then another guy comes up, and he can't load up to let the ball go, right? Rel Relentless, yep. absolutely, yep. yes. And they're exhausted that's when they're huge. doing that. I was here four, no, five years ago, five years ago for a Round Rock Dragon football game taking on the Shirts Clemens Buffaloes, and it was 38-35 at the end, and the, the Dragons wound up taking that game, their first, I think it was their first win of that season. They went on to have a pretty successful year, but uh, literally six of the offensive players of Round Rock were flat on their back at the end and they all they could do is lift their arms up uh, over their head they were exhausted as yep. well so yep. this is a place where you have to play your tail off from start to finish at least from what i've witnessed in my two broadcasts here down at shirts clemens well you know um you know and i mention him a lot when i do broadcast but dylan has played a lot of sports in his life mm -hmm. and there have been many many times <laughs> where he is just leaned over and puked. Yeah. And gone right back at it. His wife, his mother would probably just shoot me for that. But the point to that is that in in athletics at a high level, there really are moments where you have to push yourself beyond what you you are normally able to do. And, you know, of course, I would always point out to Dylan what that truly means is you need to be in better shape. <laughs> All right. Sure. But they're pushing themselves and just very, very happy for them. Happy for the coaches. Um, this was a great culmination of the last three weeks because they really have been right there. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think the rain caused this. No. I, 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 I think Vista would have played that well. And I don't think that Clemens came out, you know, not sharp or something. I'm sure it affected it a little bit, but everybody's got their wind, and it affects them both. Right. The same. Right. right. They both had to handle both it. Both got to handle it and come out. Mm -hmm. And what a way to come out. Like I mentioned, just Vista Ridge took advantage because they, they, they gave it away a couple times. But like you mentioned, those four-point plays, those four-point yep. defensive plays turned things around. And Well, I bet, and they have more... They got more turnovers tonight than they yes, had they the past couple of games, right? That was huge. Absolutely. Interceptions. Um, I mean, the interceptions are so big. Mm -hmm. um, but, and you know, uh, in the right place, right time. Um, interceptions when you're playing man-to-man -man is even harder, yeah, right? Right. Um, so it's just really hats off to them. Congratulations to the team. Congratulations to the boys. You know, congratulations to Clemens uh, scoring a touchdown there late and then getting the two-point uh, two conversion. I mean, that's, you know, that takes some stones. It sure does. Oh, my Congratulations goodness. to you. Thank you. just you. called a, <laughs> what? what is that, four, five-hour football game? Yeah, four, four hours? Four hours, yeah. That's not bad. You were right there with me, so congratulations to you, too. Hey, I think man. we, you know, that's all we do here at Vipe Live, you and I, is set records. Hey. So that's, that's what we do. But the true champion uh, in, in the broadcast world right now is Christina Weber for sticking with us. I'm sure she is beyond ready to call this a night. So <laughs> I think she says the moth wanted its 15, no, six, no, 17, no, 120 minutes of fame. <laughs> gotta, love, gotta love the it's, queen. It's still there. Congratulations to the Vista Ridge Rangers. They win tonight 28 21, their first victory of the year. Headed to the Palace on Parmer next week for district play as the Rangers will visit the Cedar Ridge Raiders. And Oof, it's going to be... That, 
Say that five times uh, fast. I, I refuse. All I've, right. Good. I've talked enough tonight. All right. So with that, we are going to say goodnight for my partner in crime and all sorts of fun things, Mr. Trey Grubb, for Christina Weber, soon event camp, Roberta Bertrand, and all the folks at Vipe Live. And, of course, this broadcast not possible without the support and sponsorship of the Vista Ridge Ranger Booster Club. Congratulations to the friends and family and fans of Vista Ridge and, of course, to Coach Scott, his staff, and the players the Rangers victorious tonight. Final score once again, 28-21. For everybody mentioned and all the folks listening, thank you so much for being part of this broadcast tonight. Be safe, enjoy your weekend, and have a good night. Michael Rose and crew signing off from Church, Texas.